Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today we have Ronnie Dawson coming to us from Texas. Ronnie Dawson is a Texas oil field worker that had an amazing UFO slash alien home invasion slash first contact experience that received international attention. In August of 2017, ETs made formal contact with Dawson and he agreed to assist them in their alien agenda, which is working toward open contact and conscious interdimensional travel. His experience has been featured in news, media, and TV. He was featured in a 15-minute segment of Caught on Camera on Japanese TV. His Ronnie Dawson YouTube channel has over a million views worldwide. He is the author of Ronnie Dawson UFO Story on Barnes & Noble and Amazon. He was also a featured speaker at the 2021 Laughlin Nevada UFO Megacon this year. So thank you so much for coming on, Ronnie. Uh, thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you for asking me. My pleasure. Um, so you told me earlier that uh, your experiences started off uh, later on in life. And uh, I guess seeing was believing. So can you get into that? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I work in the oil field and, I, and I've been doing this for 30 years and I really had never seen anything that, that you couldn't explain. I've seen, you know, a lot of sunrises to sunsets and satellites and airplanes and Spain. You know, we do a lot of plane spotting and the meter watching and space junk falling out of the sky and you name it. We've seen it, you know. And uh, but I, by 2009, I started seeing some stuff. We, I just couldn't explain it. Just uh, there was lights appearing over the trees and then they were like sequence and then they would just disappear. Nothing would fly in. Nothing would fly out. There was nothing you could there's no way it could be anything that we could think of you know and it, it was being an area that was so wooded that uh nobody would want to fly um an rc out there i certainly wouldn't want to fly my drone out there you know you'd lose it and uh it's so thick the wood so thickly wooded it that you can see that through the trees anyway you know you could look at the treetops so there's just there was no there's just nothing no way to explain it and then I was traveling south to Cisco, Texas one night at work. I was driving my crude oil transport truck and, and, and I seen a huge array of lights lit up over the road. And I mean, they stretched far, right? They had to stretch like a mile in the sky and the size of the lights were huge. And I was looking at this while I was traveling towards them. Three of them broke off and went down to a field off to my left. And they were about a, a quarter mile or less out, out in the field. And there's a there's a blue beam came out of the craft and shined down on the ground. And then there was a humanoid looking figure walking around on the ground and it had a green light glowing around it. And the, you could tell the head was way hu too huge for the body. And I'm look, taking all this in. I rolled down the window of my truck so to get a better look at it. I'm digging around in my truck trying to find the accident camera so I could get some pictures of it. And all of a sudden, I, and I start. I, I was thinking about stopping the truck and just taking all this in. And then in the blue light, I could see something darker and it was rising. It was about 30 feet off the ground. It was being lifted. And I couldn't tell what it was, but uh, all of a sudden it came into focus and it was a cow and it was whipping its head from side to side as it was being lifted. And, uh, and uh, when I seen that, I, uh, you know, the thought of stopping and taking this in was, uh, I, I just wanted to get out of there and, and uh, have these guys not chase me, you know, so uh, there was no way I was going to stop after seeing that. I have no idea what happened to the cow. If they took it, they killed it, they put it back. I, I did not know. I did not go back and investigate. <laughs> I wanted to stay away from there, really. <laughs> so, uh, but it, I, that was shocking, you know. And, and it, it confirmed what I had already been thinking that these lights were probably something to do. I was thinking that they were probably some kind of alien drone technology, you know, a geo map in the earth, testing soil and water, who knows what, you know, same thing we do, we're doing on Mars right now. You know, why wouldn't they do that here? Because these lights seem to, they're not big enough to be really crap. They were just lights that were moving around the trees. And then I seen them drop down into the field and sit there for a second, then pop up 200 feet so quick. And they'd be joined by another one, and then both of them bleak out together. You know, just stuff that you could not explain no way in the world. And I and I had an idea it was alien. And when I seen that cattle abduction, I was going, okay, there's no doubt that's alien. <laughs> that's that's alien stuff I'm looking at here. And uh, and you know, it, and it just it got wilder. You know, it, it was like, man, every time I see something like the cattle abduction, I thought, man, it can't get no wilder than that, right? But it it would, you know. It, it would be time for the next chapter in the experience, you know, and 
I tell you what, yeah, it, you know, it got pretty freaky, you know, at one point I, I started seeing the craft at first, you know, instead of just seeing the lights and after the cattle reduction, I started seeing the craft and I, and I even seen one in the late afternoon and the, in the, it wasn't even night. It was in the daylight. It was hovering over a rural farmhouse and it was black. It looked like a cloud of smoke over it. And I thought the place was on fire. And I was thinking about calling the fire department. And then all of a sudden these huge white lights came on in it, four of them. And then the thing started moving away and I was going, that's not smoke. That's it, it was a hazy looking UFO with these huge white lights shining evenly throughout it. And it started moving off and I was basically following it off. I was following it in my truck. It, it was late in the late afternoon. Yeah. And then the thing got out there and then it just, uh, it didn't shoot off. It just, it went translucent. It just went from black to, you just couldn't see it no more. And I was like, it's probably, it could still be there. You just couldn't see it. And so I was seeing some craft and we, and, and, uh, I was going, you know, I just, and it was killing me. I try to, I was trying to get pictures. I even had a camera and, and this camera failed on me and I, it had good batteries. It had no reason to fail. The lens opened up and the, and the battery just, it, the camera just locked up and died. And to this day, that camera is just locked up. You can put new batteries in it and it, and it went, I don't know something affected it or it went completely dead for no reason. And at the worst possible time. <laughs> you know? What type of craft was it? What did it look like? It was, it was really hazy looking. I mean, you couldn't see any smooth structures or nothing. It, it, it looked like a, a big area of black smoke, but it was moving together. And then all of a sudden these white lights, and I've noticed that a lot of these craft, if they stay hovered in one place too long, these, the white lights will appear through these porthole openings in the craft. It's like, you see, everything inside it lights up like it's creating too much power and they shine through these openings and you can see these white lights. I've seen it, I've seen it at night on you know, many different craft do that. You know, you can't, the craft is sitting there and then if it sits there long enough, all of a sudden the lights come on and then you can watch the lights for a while. And, and, and once the lights come on, they don't stay there very long. Then they take off, you know, and when they take off, you don't see them zip off, man. A lot of times they just blink out the lights will go off when it when it start when it takes off it's, it's like the lights go out and you can't see it anymore it just ceases to exist you know so what so, type of being did you see during that uh, cattle abduction you know all, all i could it was so far away that i could tell it, it was short and the head of it was way too big for its body okay, and uh and i couldn't really get a you know i couldn't really tell if it had a had a head like a a suit on or something like that like it or a big bubble on its head or if its head was actually that big you know but there was a weird green yellowish light glow, glowing all around it as it was there on the ground and uh i was i was really looking at it going man that looks like a little bitty guy with a huge head <laughs> and it with a green and yellowish light glowing around him and i was really wanting to get a picture of it and i was digging around looking for that accident camera and i was like and yeah and i was in a spare truck and it didn't have a camera in it at the time so i was frustrated at that time and i was decided i gotta start carrying me some cameras you know so i can catch this stuff so this happened um, in 2007 2009 and 2009 we just seen the lights in uh in, in 2000 uh well 2009 i think it, i also saw the the cattle abduction in 2010 uh, I started seeing these craft and uh, me and my buddy was uh, UFO watching. And I, I was like, you know, and I was, I was trying to tell people about it. And I was getting these uh, scholars, the skeptics, giving me a hard time. You don't got no proof. You don't got no evidence. And, and uh, well, why don't you get a picture? You know, not one picture, you know, you can't get, you know, I'm like, you seeing all this stuff and not one picture. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm determined to get a picture. So me and this buddy of mine decided to go UFO watching. And I, I'd already seen like two craft in like six days. And it seemed like they'd just show up no matter where I'm at. And I'm like, if we go UFO watching, there's a good chance we'll see some. And he was game for it. And um, and he had a, he had a house kind of at the edge of town up on a hill, perfect place in his backyard. And he's like, well, what? he didn't think I was going to see anything. And he had never seen a UFO. And I don't think he really believed in UFOs. And I went up there and I had this green laser that I had, I had acquired. And it's a, a 250 milliwatt laser and it shoots a green beam for about 10 miles you know and uh, this thing is pretty stout and it shoots a strong green beam and i told him i said i want to shoot this if, if we see you if i want to shoot this green beam at this thing i want to circle it and if i hope the craft's propulsion system 
will make the beam appear to be in. If it's bending the time and space around the, the thing's engine, uh, it should make the light appear to bend. And if you could run the camera and if we could get a picture of that, if we could get a video footage of that and the, with the light be, look like it bent, and we'd have some real evidence here that this is something not from around here, you know, some solid evidence to pr present to the scholars and skeptics, you know, and the debunk and the debunkers and stuff. And, and that was the plan. And, uh, and I didn't think we were, we'd look for a while. We didn't really see anything. There was some military jets flying around and I thought, man, there's nothing going to show up with these jets flying around, but finally they left the area and it wasn't long after they left. And, and my buddy's the first one to see it. There's a four light craft lit up and I'm going, Oh my God. And he said, he said, look, man, he said, what is that? And I looked and I said, that's it, man. That's what I seen. It looked like the same craft that I had seen earlier, you know, but, and you couldn't see the craft. You could see the four lights and then they were about the same distance apart as the craft that I had seen in the late afternoon that day. And I said, that's it. That's what I'm seeing, man. And I got that laser light out and I started shining that light around the, the lights that had lit up on that craft. And I was like, man, I hope they don't take this wrong. You know, it was like, we might be just be two piles of ash over here if they take this wrong. So it was, it was scary firing that laser. You know, this was a UFO and it was close and personal. It, it was probably a couple, 300 yards away and it was probably a hundred feet up. And so it, it was right in the neighborhood, you know? So, and I shined the light around the thing. I did not see the beam deviation that I was hoping for. And I had no idea. Uh, my buddy Alan was over there and I, I looked at him and I said, okay, now I'm going to shine this thing on the craft and we'll see if it reflects the beam or if it absorbs it or whatever. So, and I said, well, hang on, man. I said, I hope they don't shoot. I hope they don't take it wrong. So I shined it on the surface of the craft and it just completely absorbed the laser. I mean, it didn't even light up like if you'd sign it, shine it on the side of a car. It didn't reflect off of it. Like it, if it would, if you shined it on a mirror. So it just completely absorbed the beam. It did not, didn't light up anything. And I looked at him and I said, uh, I hope you're getting all this on the camera. And I, I glanced over at him, the camera, the whole time this is going on, the camera is like three feet from the guy. <laughs> He's standing there with his hands on his hips, gawking at the thing with his mouth wide open. <laughs> and I'm going, dude, you're feeling, your primary objective is to run the camera and get all this on, on the camera. So he, he, and he grabbed the camera, he tried to get it up and running. And uh, I'm sitting there waiting for the camera to get up and running. And then the thing just completely blinked out. I mean, all four lights went off at once and, and that was the end of it. But things got interesting the, the next night. The next night I came home from work and uh, this is the night of the alien home invasion. And it was like, I don't know if, uh, but like I said, maybe I asked for it. <laughs> I shined the laser on the craft. I don't know. Maybe I, some, to some degree, I must, I probably asked for it. Uh, I didn't think it would happen. I came home from work and it was, uh, and there was a whole, there was the, I have a, I have a house cat that's in, the, it's a tabby mancoon cat and it, it's declawed. It's in the house and, and, and he's missing. And I go roaming around the house and one of my, and one of my, second bath bathrooms that we never use it's an old bathroom that needs to be remodeled and uh but there's a huge hole chewed in the floor i mean big enough for a cat to escape through the cat's not in the house and there's a huge hole in the floor and and i and i started i stuck my face down to the hole and i started calling him and i could hear him meowing up underneath there for so so i stuck my arm off down in the hole was reaching around trying to see if i could feel him and then i i pulled my hand back out and i looked up in the hole and i seen two scary eyes looking up through the hole at me and i couldn't guarantee that it that it wasn't it was something not the cat it was scary looking whatever it was and i thought my god you're crazy for sticking your arm up in the hole there could be anything down there you know because underneath my house here in texas uh, we have i have an access panel but there's just dirt uh, and skunks and rattlesnakes and all sorts of stuff can get up underneath your house and uh so i i, I took the I went to the access panel and something had pulled it out and I'm surprised the cat was even still up on there because he could have escaped. Something had pulled the big rocks that hold the access cover on. And so something had gotten up underneath there somehow. And, and it take a lot of strength to move those big rocks and the cat, I hollered at the cat and, and I could hear him up underneath there. And he came actually came to the opening and I grabbed him out from underneath there and I shoved the rocks back, took him back in the house. I went and got a, a, 
a piece of 30 year tin, which is really strong stuff and got some screws and screwed the tin over the hole in the floor. So I'm kind of frustrated. This cat has chewed a hole in my floor. He's and uh, you know, and I still, instead of coming home and relaxing like I want to, now I'm coming home and fetching cats out from underneath my house and patching holes in the floor. So there's a lot of, I'm kind of frustrated. So it, it's, it's time to go to bed. So, and like I said, I leave enough lights on my house that I can move where I can go. I can go to the kitchen and get something to drink. I can get up and go to the bathroom without falling over stuff. So my house is not completely dark. Uh, and I lived there alone, just me and the cat at this time. I had, I had a girlfriend that's in college, but she's uh, got student loans and grants and stuff like that. So we really can't be together until she gets her diploma and stuff. So she's living in her apartment over in Eastland and I'm living over here in Ranger with the cat, you know? And so I laid, I laid down in my bed, get ready to go to bed. And, and it's weird. Cause I sleep, I sleep kind of odd. I sleep, I sleep where your feet should be because I don't like the bathroom light shining in my eyes, but I like the bathroom light so I can get up and go to the bathroom. So I sleep backwards in the bed. And, and as a bachelor, there's nobody to tell me I can't sleep like that. So I sleep in backwards actually in the bed from the, where the headboard is, is where I got my feet. And also laying with my head down towards the door opening of the living room that I could feel the air conditioner blow through the room. And I'm right underneath the ceiling fan, which I like the, the breeze blowing on me. So I'm sleeping backwards in the bed. And uh, I, I lay down in that bed. And I know sooner laid down in that bed, and then I hear I hear stuff breaking in the kitchen. I hear stuff getting knocked over, glasses getting broke. I hear it sound like cabinets opening. I hear drawers being pulled out, and I'm thinking, oh, what in the heck is going on in there? And so I try to get up, and I realize I'm pinned to the bed. I'm absolutely – and the harder I fight it, the more force it, it uses. And I can't see anything holding me, but it felt like there's a 400-pound gorilla on me holding me down and I'm thinking my god and I can still hear stuff moving you know getting broken there and stuff opening and closing and I'm thinking there's somebody in my house and I've got some kind of medical emergency here I don't know if I'm having a heart attack what is going on I'm trying to put trying to figure out exactly what's going on and I'm thinking the cat must be in there doing all this and then I, but I look at the door and there's the cat and he's looking back towards the, the kitchen and he's like nervous looking like he's looking at something in the kitchen and I hear the noises in there. So I was like, it's not the cat. It's something in my kitchen. It's not the cat. And then the cat runs in there and jumps in bed with me. So I'm still paralyzed in the bed. The cat's walking around the bed and nothing. It's not affecting him at all. And he's walking around the bed. Like it's no problem. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, whatever's in the kitchen darts across the, in the living room where my bedroom looks into, and it comes, goes across the door so fast. It's just a street. I mean, you can't even see it. I was like, I've never seen a creature move that fast. It was just a blur. And then it moved, then it went back. And then I seen a second one. And then this thing is, 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 it's almost like they started playing chase or something. They were just like, one was chasing the other and they were going back and so back and forth so fast. And you still couldn't get a look at what it was. And then I seen one run across the vertical wall. He ran across the vertical wall. Like gravity didn't even affect him. And, and then I seen them, they run straight up this straight up the wall and pushed off the ceiling and run back down. And they were moving so fast. I still couldn't get a good look at them, but I could tell, but by then I'd figured out this probably had more to do with what went on last night. than some kind of a, you know, I was, I was hoping that it was a, a raccoon or, or a squirrel or something had gotten in my house doing all this. But after, when I seen it run across that vertical wall, I knew then I was like, okay, that is, that's not something from around here. And these two things are running crazy in my living room, ransacking my house, knocking up. They knocked the computer lamp over and the bulb broke on it. They're opening drawers and cabinets in the living room now. And then a third one coming to the scene and he, and he, he came in there so fast. All I seen was a streak, but he stopped right in front of the door about 10 feet from me. And, and it reared up from all fours. When it stopped, I could see it perfectly clear. And it, this thing was about 18 inches tall. It's the ugliest thing you ever seen, man. I mean, it, it stood up from all fours on two legs. It had a human-looking face, like an old, angry old man's face. It, it looked like it had large eyes, but they were squinted, like the little bit of light that I had in the room was hurting its eyes. And this thing had these odd-looking long arms that, that it was running on, and I couldn't tell if it was claws or if it had something like uh, insect hands on it. And this thing stood up and it looked like he had a body armor on it and it had spikes, uh, it had thorn appendages sticking out of the body armor on it. 
and it had but it had a humanoid looking face it looked like it had a human looking nose it had a really tight mouth and and the big eyes but they were squinting like the light was hurting its eyes and i mean i was 10 feet away from looking at this thing and this was one scary looking little dude and he wasn't big but i mean man they're fast and and i thought man you guys just do whatever you want to just stay out of here that's i just all i want them to do is just stay out of that stay out of that bedroom but that didn't happen he, he stopped and he looked at the other two it's almost he didn't i didn't hear any sound coming from him but it's almost like he scolded them and, and they stopped playing chase with each other and they started opening cabinets and drawers again i could hear them really get into the searching again and then all of a sudden all three of them just ran right underneath the bed that i was laying in and they started lifting that bed with me on it and they just started bouncing it it was like they were picking it up and slamming it back to the floor and the cat took off. He, the cat flew out of there like his tail end was on fire. And I seen him sliding around the door, getting out of there. And I thought, wow, man, you know, I felt like I was abandoned. You know, <laughs> was like, the one guy I could do something took off and I'm sitting here and I can't do anything. And they're bouncing the crap out of the bed. I'm bouncing on top of the mattress and, the, and I'm surprised they, the bed didn't just fall apart because it seemed like they were picking it up and just slamming it back to the floor. And, uh, and I thought, my God, you know, and then they stopped bouncing the bed. Then I could hear them digging. They dug into the box springs under the bed. I could hear them claw. I could feel them clawing at the mattress underneath me. And I thought, man, they're going to claw through this mattress and they kill me. You know, so I'm sitting here, you know, you can be horrified for uh, once you're horrified long enough, man, eventually you you either, you know, fight or flight is what, is the, what people do. If you can't, if you can't flight, you're going to, you're going to get in that mood where you want to fight, you know? So I, I, I was getting mad. I was like, it's them or me. They're going to kill me if I don't do something. And they started clawing up into the mattress and I thought, man, they're going to claw through here and kill me if I don't. So I had this in my brain. I said, I'm going to, whatever's holding me, I'm going to break free from it. There's a golf club in the corner. I'm going to grab that golf club and I'm going to go, I'm going to kill me some dadgum aliens. And so I tried to fight loose from that force. And, and at this, this time it felt like it almost killed me. It almost stopped my heart. It felt like it affected my lungs. It felt, it felt it affected my breathing. It was like, uh, it, it came close to killing me, I think. And I thought, man, that hurt. I, you know, I, and at this point I realized I'm at their mercy. They, they're clawing at the bed and, and they, and, and they couldn't finally, they stopped and it quit. And, and all of a sudden, it got quiet and I never seen them leave, but I was, they were over behind me. They got over to where the, I had, I had the gun cabinet over here and it's locked. And I was thinking, you know, and that's where I kept the laser that I used the night before. So I thinking that they were, once they got to where the laser was being kept, everything got quiet and silent. And then they, they, they left. So the only thing I can think is that they were there checking out the laser, you know, and maybe they didn't, they didn't know what all, you know, how, what kind of technology was, we had or whatever we're just checking it out but once they got to where that laser was being kept and i really thought uh it it would have been gone you know but it was still there in the box but uh, the funny thing was you know once they released me it was like the the plan i had tried earlier to jump up and grab the golf club and kill these things when they released me it was like they had blocked the signal my brain sent my body and and when they released me that that's the first thing my body, I jumped out of that bed. I grabbed that golf club and I cussed and I, I was in a fit of rage all of a sudden. And this, I had tried to do this like five minutes earlier and, and with no, with no, couldn't do it. And all of a sudden when they released me, that got processed. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm, it was like my body was acting like a robot without my permission, man. Cause this got processed and I had tried to do this five minutes earlier, but now I've got the golf club in my hand. I'm, pissed off so i'm like and i'm like well now i'm going on an alien i went around checked all the dark places in the house every cabinet and every drawer in the whole daggum house was open and uh, there were some dishes that were broken in there a uh, lamp was broken over the computer desk you know so you know i definitely had i had alien evidence and and, and and you know, as a, as an experience, so there's nobody. You know, if we're if we're gonna take ET contact seriously, and we're gonna investigate ET contact, I had physical evidence in my house and nobody to call. They said, "Why well, didn't you call the police?" I guarantee the police in my town. If you call up and say I've got ET in my house, they're think they're gonna think they're gonna go check in your house for a meth lab, but they're certainly not gonna bring over any forensic team to look for evidence of 
of et and and that's the kind of that's where we got to get uh, you know that's this is the if you know the, the scientific community wants evidence but they're not willing we're not willing to look for it you know i had physical evidence in my house that we could have there was et walking around in my house there was et running across the wall there had to be some physical evidence but there's nobody that a contact he can go to and say hey guess what man i've had et in my house and we need to get a team over here right away and have somebody take you seriously and come do a legitimate search for evidence you know it's that 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 aspect of our community UFO community isn't there. And as a contact I contactee, I could tell you that's the kind of stuff we need because these are rare, these are rare, rare opportunities to actually come up with something like this. And but there's nobody. There's a lot of people with UFO researchers out there, but there's nobody that's <laughs> ready, uh, ready to come that quick, you know, yeah. and uh, and take you, you know, man, I couldn't get anybody in the UFO community to believe me, you know, for years I was like. I was in, I was in a uh, international, my story was in an international news. I had the Japanese flew in, flew over here and did a TV shoot here at my house. And still nobody in the UFO community here in the United States knew who Ronnie Dawson was, you know, I was in the Metro use in, in the UK. I was on, uh, I was on Italian uh, blasting news out of Italy <laughs> and still nobody here in the U S knew who Ronnie Dawson was. <laughs> so, <laughs> There's just, there's so many people have so many encounters here that the competition is fierce, just getting your story even recognized and taken seriously to begin with, you know? Mm -hmm. So I even had a guy, he was in Vietnam he owned a business over there. And he said he was in a, in a bar in Vietnam and uh, my UFO story aired on the Vietnam news and the government controls that. Wow. And the guy was freaked out and, and, and he actually filmed it on his phone inside a bar in Vietnam. And they had edited what looked, there was a appendage sticking out of the top of the, the alien's head that was in the bottom of the UFO that kind of looked like a horn. Oh, and they God. had removed that. They had edited the horn off of it. <laughs> so it, it wasn't, and he showed me the picture of it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my picture, you know? And he goes, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I heard this story and I had to film it, you know, on my, on my camera. Yeah, and uh, inside a bar in Vietnam, you know, a wow. UFO story on their news, and that's wow. you know that don't happen over there, man. <laughs> you know, I think he was in Laos or someplace like that, nice or Cambodia or someplace. I don't, you know, and uh, the uh, the the UFO you talked about, you said it had four lights. Yeah, it had it had four big, huge, white, bluish lights that that shine from inside the craft. It's not like a light that shines like a flashlight it's like an illumination inside the craft they, they come out of these they they sort of like round openings or maybe not completely round but there's some kind of an opening and when you see these whitish blue lights power you know when they they'll shine out of these openings and you could then you could see the craft and 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 then these th these lights will sequence and then a lot of times i've seen the craft the, the lights will come on and the, the craft will have like a counterclockwise rotation to it where you'll see the backlight disappear and then it'll look like a light will appear in the front. But actually what it is, is, uh, it's one of the lights being circled. It disappears in the back and then it, it shows up in the front, you know? So the, uh, the video that we're going to share tonight, uh, from YouTube, uh, when was that, when did that happen? Is it that event right now that you were talking about? Uh, no, this, this, uh, you know, I, about a year went by and I, and I didn't, after, after all this, I didn't see a thing. I mean, nothing, man. It was like, well, you know, I guess I'll never see anything like that again, you know? And, uh, I was just working, I was working hauling on. And that's, this is when it's what I call the coma Texas sighting happened. Three UFOs in a one hour period. One was a huge UFO mothership that was a mile long. And for the first time, I was I actually got some I got some footage and video, and I filled my phone completely full of pictures of the stuff I seen that night. And and then when my memory was full, I even seen more stuff that oh, I couldn't yeah. get a picture of, but I just had to sit there and watch it, you know. And I and I, I drew some sketches of the stuff that I I couldn't record. And that was a wild night. You know, if we could ever go back in time and, and sell tickets to <laughs> share your experience with somebody, I'll, I have people standing in line to come back with me to March, the night of March the 2nd, 2011, man. Cause I got to tell you, that was a wild night. Just seeing that mile long mothership fly right over the top of your head is something that you just can't imagine. I could tell you about it, but it, 
there's nothing like sitting there seeing it. I mean, this thing, the bottom of it was solid rock and it had burn marks and craters on it. It looked like, it looked like you were looking up at the surface of the moon. And there for, a, there for an instant, I thought it was a giant meteor fixing to take me out. I thought, oh my God, there's a giant meteor just came in. I had no idea it was a UFO. It looked like a giant meteor, solid rock. And it was a hundred yards uh, on both sides of me. And this thing was moving slow, man. I was going, what? And then it slowed down to a, it slowed to a stop. And then I seen this huge pipe coming out of the bottom of it. I'm going, okay, well, meteors don't have pipes coming out of the bottom of it. And this thing slowed to a stop. The front end started tilting up. The first part that passed over me, it took about three or four seconds to completely pass over me. It was 100 yards on both sides. And if it have, literally, if it had fell out of the sky, you would literally need a golf cart to go around it. It was a wow. V-shaped craft. Each each leg of the V was about a half mile long. And you would literally need a golf golf cart to drive around this thing. And it was probably an eighth of a mile wide or on the surface of it. And so this thing in the sky, it's huge. And I actually caught some video of it on my phone as it was as it was leaving. It left and it scared me to death because I thought I've got my phone and I'm going to miss the shot of this thing. And I, and I was, cause I knew my, I was already getting warnings that my memory was full and I thought this is the opportunity of lifetime, man. You do not want to screw this up. And I was looking at my display screen and it wasn't nothing too impressive. You know, it was too close and, and I could, and I was going, no, this needs to be a good shot. You know, this, and I, I'm just watching this thing, waiting for the, waiting for it to get right where I can, click record and then this thing took off like a jet <laughs> this giant thing took off man i thought i'm gonna miss it oh my god i'm gonna miss it but it went over there and then it banked and when this thing banked and come back it, it was going away from me and it, and it just stopped and then it banked and then it come right back at me like a yo-yo i seen the bottom go away and then all of a sudden the top was coming back now when, when the top was coming back at this thing man i seen it looked like a city on the surface of this thing there was buildings there was tires with lights on them there was blue fluorescent power line things uh, stretched across the surface of it there was these row of burning flares giant whatever they were they were shooting gas like fire out of them like there was some kind of refining process going on it, it certainly wasn't uh being used for you know to, like a jet engine and it was just shooting up uh it was just shooting up in the air above the the, the craft surface i mean it wasn't it wasn't no signs of, it wasn't for propulsion it was like some kind of refining process it was a huge flame that was burning like it was burning something off and there was not just one there were several of them and, I, and i'm taking all this stuff in and i actually got a i got some footage of that thing and then uh man we've been looking at this footage for years trying to enhance it and uh skeptics and debunkers i've man i've done everything they asked you know i've i've, I've started an imger account where they could get it on there and they could blow up the footage and look at the pixels to see if they'd been played with and and uh you know i've I've actually, I've worked with the democrats, you know, nobody can debunk it. Cause I know I was sitting there. I watched it with my eyes. I, I caught it on video. It looked just like, look, the video looked just like what I saw with my eyes to set my eyes could see all of it. And I recorded this thing from a mile away. This thing is still wider than the camera's field of view. The camera's field of view from a mile away is probably a little over a quarter mile to a half mile. You know, and this thing you can see is bigger from at a mile away than my camera could record. So this thing is huge flying over the trees in Texas, man. I mean, it, it, it blocked out most of the stars in the sky at times. And I mean, you couldn't miss it. If you'd have been there, you'd have seen it. You, you couldn't help but to see it. Wow. And sadly, I was the only one there to watch it, but I did at least get some footage of the daggum thing. And, um, and I also filed the FAA with some debunkers. They dared me. Said, "Well, you said if you if you really saw it, you wouldn't be afraid to file a, a FAA low craft report." And keep in mind, it's a felony to file a false report. And I said, "No, I have no problem." And I filed I filed that report because I had no problem. I know what I've seen. I know it's there. There are three different radars in the area. I was 68 miles from the the radar at Abilene Regional Airport. I was about 80 miles away from the, the radar at Dias Air Force Base and 138 miles away up at Snyder, Texas, there's a 600 mile military radar. So there's three giant radars in that area within range. So I, I have, I, you know, I, I wasn't afraid at all. So I filed an FAA low craft report. I made sure not to mention the word UFO. 
I said, giant, low craft, way too low to the ground for the size of the craft. And, and, um, and when we did the, we did a phone conference call on it and they said that all known craft in their area had been accounted for without incident. And then I should report my UFO, the term they used to describe it, to New Fork National UFO Reporting Center. And I thought, man, that's pretty odd in it that, that the FAA would call something a, a UFO. And if you're the if you're the FAA and, and you can't identify a craft of that size flying in the air, uh, you think that would raise some red flags? You think that would make the news? You think? Uh, people would be asking questions no it was it's almost like they see it a lot because uh, they had no problem calling it a ufo they had no problem referring me to the new fork to to report it and uh but just seeing that thing that's the most amazing sight you could ever see man i mean this thing when it, it you've seen that uh independence day when the big craft is coming in and there's a fog bank around it it's like the, the, the coldness of space is reacting to the heat of our atmosphere and it's causing fog to roll off of it. That's exactly the way this thing looked. You could like literally see the fog rolling off this thing like it was on fire, but it wasn't on fire. It was just the temperature difference in the atmosphere and it. This, this fog was just rolling off of it like it was on fire, but then it, but then it quit. It started going on my head. All the fog had left. And then when it stopped, it tilted up. And then when it shot off, it took off so fast, it made vortexes in the air, something that big moving that quick, made huge giant vortexes in the air, like a vacuum when it took off. And you could see, see what little bit of fog was left that was trapped on the surface of it, being swept over the side of it as it started moving like water over a waterfall. You could see this stuff rushing up. Man, it's, it's an amazing sight. I mean. That's I a lot of detail. It. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's. And when this thing came back at me, it got it eventually got so close. I thought about crawling up underneath my truck and hiding. I thought, oh my God, they're coming back for me. And then they then they stopped about halfway to me. And then they made a huge kind of a sweeping circle and it and it took off at a 45 degree angle. And within about two seconds, it was from a it was a mile long craft to just a, a array of lights moving across the sky, like I had first seen it when it came down. And uh, and I mean it was when it and I, I was jumping up and down like a like a high school school girl school girl that just got invited to the prom man. It's yeah. like I didn't get taken there for a while. I thought I was going to be taken. You know, the, the when that small craft first approached me, there was three different craft. The first craft was this disc that I had been seeing and getting some pictures of, and then it moved it moved right at me, and I was hiding behind this storage tank. And then I seen the disc actually starting to block out the stars above me. And I was hiding and my knees were shaking so bad. I couldn't run. And, uh, this compartment lit up underneath the craft and there was a humanoid figure looking out. You've seen the picture of that. It's, it's on uh, you can see the pictures on, you can just type in Ronnie Dawson UFO pictures on uh, Google images and you'll see a whole page of, of the pictures that I've taken light up. And you can see this uh, creature, in standing in the compartment underneath it when the light came the light came on up underneath the craft and there was something looking out of this thing at me and it scared the heck out of me and i leaned around my hiding spot and i got one picture and then i looked around and i seen all the darkness around me and i was just waiting for something to come running at me with slimy hands and i was thinking i'm gonna toss the phone and maybe somebody will have a clue why i disappeared and i really thought that night i was going away but that, that craft eventually backed away, and then a military jet flew right over the top of that battery. I mean, right where the UFO was at. And I thought I was fixing to see a dogfight. I thought I was fixing to see a collision, and that jet made a big sweeping circle and left. And then that's when that big craft started coming in. It was like the big craft. I don't know if it thought the jet was going to uh, get in a dogfight with their UFO or what, or why that thing come in. If they were trying to impress me, they did a heck of a job because, uh, uh that was three wild sided, three different UFOs. Uh, and I mean, up close and personal. And I got pictures of a lot of that stuff, man. And, uh, the third one I, was the, I think you made a replica of it. Yeah, I did some sketches. It, it, Yvonne Smith said, uh, and it never occurred to me, you know, if you, if, you, if you're a contactee or experiencer and you can't, you didn't get a picture of it, you can always make a sketch, you know, do the best you can make a sketch of what you saw. 
at night. You know, take the time, do it as best you can, and give people an idea of what you've seen. You know, and she told me she suggested I make a sketch. I met her in uh, Roswell at the Roswell Years Folk Festival, and she suggested. I thought I never thought about that, man. I can I can make sketches of the things that I couldn't get pictures of to show everybody what I'm talking about, you know? So that's really helped. That was a great idea, you know? And it never occurred to me. So it looked know? like a weird uh, you, like a, a three like three or four-sided. Uh, I'll yeah, be sharing it, the, uh, the, inter- the, uh, the the YouTube video yeah, shortly. The, it's a V-shaped craft, but the tips of it did this odd pointing in thing. And this thing looked pretty scary flying through the air. I mean, it, it you know, it's a, fl- a huge flying V above the trees. That's a, a mile in total length. And, uh, and each, each half of the V was a half mile long and the tips are pointed in inward. And it, and it's almost like you could take the thing and set it on top of a pyramid. Cause it, the, there's an opening in on the interior of the V and it, and with, and the way the points turn in, it's almost like you could set this thing right on top of a pyramid and it would, it would fit a four-sided pyramid and i'm like you know what maybe that's what the pyramids are for maybe they're maybe they're like charging bases for this thing you know you did a a drawing of like an insectoid on that ship looking but you, yeah. you can see the earth too okay yeah that the huge insectoid is something we found you know we're i was like i was looking at the surface of this thing and man it is i tell you what it's cool that to get a picture of this thing and, and know that you're looking at an alien craft. You're looking for something you can recognize on an alien craft. And uh, so I'm looking for structures. I'm looking for machinery. Uh, and then the last thing I, the last thing in the world I, I thought I would find on this thing is creatures. Now, I don't know if they're creatures. I don't know if they're statues. You know, I, I, I didn't see one move, but there's, I've certainly identified three different creatures that we found on the surface of this thing. And, uh, and through the foot, through the seal frames, one of them you, you can see some movement on it so it looked like it had two arms and they moved so this is equivalent to the pastures walking on the wings of a 747 in flight so these things are walking around on the surface of this thing and this thing is moving through the air like a jet you know that's that's demonstrating technology that we ain't got that we don't have you know so the, the fact that this thing could, they could make a rock fly the fact that this thing can hover the flat the fact that these creatures can walk around on the surface of the thing while it's flying around like a jet, you know, this is all technology way beyond anything we have. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, absolute proof that this is an alien craft. And I, I think that I think that science is going to play a big role in the future when when the scholars and skeptics finally do accept that we're being visited by by alien craft and that, and that they're going to want proof proof that it's from, proof that the craft we're seeing is from somewhere else and this is absolute proof that the craft that we're seeing is from somewhere else because this thing has creatures on it that don't exist on our planet so you know i don't know what other proof you need and you know unfortunately at the time this was a uh, in 2011 uh it was a motorola tundra cell phone that i had that i captured the pictures on we didn't have smartphones back then so it's they didn't have it was the first phone that had video one of the first phones that had video capability uh but it it captures really crappy video so that you can send it in messages and stuff it's a video but it's not a high quality video but yeah, but it's good enough that you can see that it's not just a blur i mean i get, you can see the arms on the creature you can see the head on the creature and uh I mean, it's it's a good enough picture that it will make you scratch your head, going, "Dad, gum, what is that?" You know, <laughs> that's not normal. That's not. I, it's, it's it was enough of it was good enough that a zoologist looked at it and said, "He said, I don't know what it is." A zoologist looked at it and said, "I know every creature on planet Earth, and I've never seen it like that. It looks it looks kind of like a, a forty foot praying mantis. Except, you know, praying mantises' arms don't come out of their back. The arms on this thing came out of its back, not out out of its." chest and side like a praying mantis so this is a praying mantis like but certainly not mm. a praying this may be the mother of all alien praying mantises here she's 40 foot tall man wow. they're riding around on a rock you know <laughs> i would have uh, appreciated having those dishes that were thrown on the floor uh like to have a, a form of dna test done on them oh yeah man they were i mean the yeah, other and, you know, I had a guy tell me, he said, John, if you really had ET in your house and, and uh, I said, man, you would have got some kind of bacteria, you would have got some kind of infection and it probably would have killed you. And it kind of rung up because, because what happened is not long after that, I had a staph infection on my belly 
Oh, and and I mean, my whole side got infected, and I mean, and uh, and and I kept going to the doctor, and he gave me a stronger and stronger and stronger antibiotic, and and finally we got to the yeah. point that it was spreading, and uh, I thought I was going to die. You know, I, I'm infected bad. My whole I got red infection going from my shoulders all the way down to my hips, all through my abdomen. And he, and he kept sending the test off for staff and they kept coming back negative, but mm. yet whatever this was, was killing me. And finally he said, I, I, this is the strongest antibiotic I've got. He said, if this doesn't do it, we'll have to get you to the CDC, uh, uh center for disease control up in Fort Worth. And, and they'll, they'll have to try to make you an antibiotic before it kills you. That's basically what happens. And uh, I was one, I was one one try away from having to go to the CDC and, and actually have a, have, have a gourmet antibiotic made to try to stop this thing. And uh, that last one that we tried actually turned it around and it finally went away. But when that guy told me, he goes, yeah, you would have got an infection and it might. And I thought, you know what, man, I had something very similar to that. And it never had crossed my mind that those, those ET were walking around on my counter up there and I'm in there leaning. I, my belly is leaning against that counter when I'm washing dishes. My my belly's leaning against that counter when I'm making coffee, you know. And I was like, and this was like a heat bump or something that just got infected and went crazy. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, that very well could have been exactly what the guy was talking about. This could have been uh, what happens when people in ET touch the same surfaces, you know. Mm. Well, well uh, I had a friend, uh, Steve Boucher, who who was uh, he got abducted. He was on a uh, his entire band, musical band, got abducted and they were brought into a crowd by the Greys. And I think he eventually touched, the, he wasn't allowed to touch the, the ship upon entering, but he did. And he had a wart that started to grow <laughs> oh, on, his, on his finger because of that. It took a while yeah. to get off, but yeah. But so, so when did the, uh, the Triangle UFO uh, incident happen? Uh, you talked to, you give me a, a drawing uh, of that. Uh, yeah, that 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 happened after the huge mothership had had left already okay. and uh, i had finished getting my load on my crude oil transport truck and i started heading out there and i i probably wasn't a mile away from there and there's a there's a there's a double wide mobile home sets off out of, in a pasture just a little ways off the highway and i went down there and there was a there was a lot a strange light over the top of this thing maybe 50 feet above the thing and i thought man is that a tower? What is that? You know, after seeing all these UFOs that I just seen, I was like, okay, so I got my spotlight on my truck. I got a spotlight on my truck and I shined it up there on this thing. And uh, when I shined the light on this thing, I guess they figured the gig was up. Uh, this huge triangle lit up on the bottom of this thing. I couldn't see exactly what the craft looked like. It was just totally dark, but I could see the, the triangle. There was, there was round lights all around this triangle opening in the bottom of this thing. And this, this, the opening in the bottom of this thing was so, so large. You could put a, you could put a Cessna airplane up in it. So I've got these circular lights lit up around the bottom triangular opening of this thing. I'm looking inside the alien craft and it, it doesn't look like anything uh, ever that was ever touched by human hand in there. There's tons of piping along the walls. The closest thing I've ever seen to it was like in the, in the movie, in, in the movie alien inside the alien craft. When you see all the, it looks like more like the inside of a body than it does uh inside of a craft that's the way this thing it looked it had ribbing it had uh, piping it had there was a huge uh thing that spiraled down to a, a tight circle like a cochlea of the ear that was six or eight feet wide i'd say like some kind of a turbo line or something that, and it made this huge spiral like a like a snail or like a, you might see like an ocean snail and uh I could really see that thing. Well, it was lit up inside there. I'm, I'm looking, I'm on the ground. I'm, I'm, I'm probably a hundred yards away, maybe 200 yards away, but I'm looking up inside an alien craft and it's lit up in there and I could see, see it well. And I guarantee you don't look, I can't, you could tell that it wasn't the inside of a helicopter or inside of a airplane. I was close enough. And I, and I, I was looking at my phone. I was going, man, should I try to delete some pictures? And, and get one of these and i was thinking oh man i could delete the wrong one i could delete the mothership by mistaking it and lose that one you know so i'm i'm looking at my phone going man 
this is this would have been the best picture I would have caught that night. <laughs> you know, this thing was close and moving slow. It just slow. It, you could hear it. Hum, you could hear a slow a hum coming out of it, and it just slowly moved away from the house and, until I couldn't see it anymore. Wow. Okay. So that thing was huge, really. Yeah, it was. It, was, it had to have been huge, man. I mean, like you could have put a Cessna airplane in the yeah. bottom of it. So, I, and like I said, maybe there was a smaller craft that would dock in the bottom of this thing. I don't know yeah. what the triangle opening was for. And they had those, all the, had this huge array of round lights around the triangle, like uh, it would help something dock in it. So it may be a craft with another craft that popped out of it that was somewhere else. It was the reason there was a hole there. Uh, and what they were doing over these people's home, I don't know. I eventually went back and I talked to the people. I, and I said, man, I said, I don't want to scare you, but I told them what I had seen over their house and everything. And they said that, you know, they, they don't remember anything particular odd happening that night, but they said their, uh, their, their mother lived with them there. She was a very elderly woman and she had passed away, which she said for years that she had told them, uh, and her her bedroom window looked out over the field. They had a huge field around this place, and and there wasn't a road or anything back over there. And she said the lights came and would came and visit visit me again. Oh. She said, yeah, she she say the lights came and visited me oh. again last night, and they were like, you know, I wonder what nobody knows what she's talking about. Yeah. You know, they oh. just thought she was crazy, losing her mind. You know, she was old. But I told them she goes, yeah, well, I just wonder because you know, grandmother always said. You know, she's the latch would come and visit her across the field, come right up to her window. You know, love it. Oh, who knows, man? <laughs> That's awesome. Hello, I'm Ronnie Dawson. I'm the witness in the Coleman UFO sighting on March the 2nd, 2011. I know a lot of you guys have seen the pictures, this videos out there, and uh, you and you guys want to know just what are you looking at? So I'm going to walk you through it tonight. Um, give me a few minutes of your time. I'm going to show you a picture of an actual UFO. I'm going to show you a picture of an alien in that UFO. I'm going to show you a picture of an alien mothership and some close-up stuff on the surface of that ship. Uh, so let's get this thing rolling. We'll get you through it as quick as we can. This is a picture of me. This is a picture of tank batteries. I essentially go up on these tank batteries. I gauge the product in here, which is crude oil. I measure it. Uh, I was standing on top of these batteries and I took pictures of the lights in the field. And I was up on top of this battery when the ship approached me. And then I went down and hid between the tanks because it scared the hell out of me. Uh, this here is my truck. This is the truck that I drive. And I purchased a crude oil in. We're out there. We work days. We work nights. And if something's going on out there at night, it's going to be guys like us that are first ones to see it. We're going to be out in the middle of nowhere on real locations all hours of the night this is at the top of the actual tank where the ufo was uh, when i first put upon this location there was a ship that was traveling above the trees and the lights went out uh, and it never passed over and i knew it was out there the lights would come on here and there and at one point uh, i got a video that comes up over here and a light takes off I'll show you that video too, but this is the actual location. Take note of this tree. This tree is in the in the in the video of the alien spaceship with the alien in it. Okay, this is a zoomed in picture of the ship. And this is the alien right here. It, he either has a horn on his head or that's some kind of a helmet. And as you can see, it's not the little green alien that uh, they talk about. And they say that these lights are out of focus, but the truth is that with the naked eye, these eye, these lights stretch like taffy. Uh, you can see how clear the edge of the portal is, uh, and the lights right next to it stretchy, so like something like magnetism might cause lights to do or something. I'm going to zoom out on this picture. As you can see... This is the tanks I was hiding behind. These are the trees that I showed you earlier right here. And there's the ship. Now I want to show you a video right quick. And this is a this is a light that came up off the ground and then it took off. There it went right there. You know, that was odd. I, I don't know what what that was. 
here is the video of the alien mothership that passed over lately that a lot of people have seen and uh, this is an amazing video you're going to be blown away by this i'm trying to find this thing with this little flip phone camera which is almost impossible frustrating as it was i'm going to start slow motion it now so that you can see the ship come into view I actually got a left hand piece of it is all and it has to be a quarter to a half mile big which is really frustrating but when you're working with a flip phone and you're on the fly it is very hard to do let me show you this thing coming in here here it is here's the left hand piece of it it's starting to come into view as you can see right here there's a uh, there's a four blade looks like fan inside a dome to move in a little bit further and take note you can see this venting gas or fumes and i'll show you what that is later after the ship the ship is coming in horizontal it's, it's going to flip to a vertical position and you can see these lights right here i don't know if this is a probe dock what this is uh, but this ship has an odd shape to it it's like nothing uh, that the united states air force has i can guarantee it as you can see the ship is transitioning from from horizontal to vertical from vertical to horizontal as you can see we're getting and the thing is it's a fuzzy piece of video but in every fuzzy piece of video as the camera lens adjusts you there is a good picture and that what this is is a good picture right here this is a power unit this thing was above the ship i don't know if it was sitting on a tire or if it simply uh flew above the ship itself but it there were glowing blue lines that were connected to it as you can see the structure surface structure on the ship Remember that smoke that we talked about earlier? You could, there's, there are three giant flares right here. And that smoke was coming from these flares. As you can see, this right here is, it looks like an over and under shotgun. It's two huge pipes coming straight out. But the, the outlet on these things, we've looked closer at them and they are square, not round, like you would see in, in typical plumbing. And there's like an alien antenna looking thing back here. And you can still see the surface structure on this stuff. It starts going out of view. And then I lose it. And it don't come back to the very end of the picture. Uh, I want you guys to see this stuff. Uh, I don't know how to tell you. I wish, I wish I could tell you what it looked like. This is what the ship looked like in all. Quarter to a half mile across. All we caught in the video was about this part of it right here about the left half of it and right here's where the flares and stuff are and uh it's crazy you know that it looks like you could sit right on top of a pyramid crazy 60 miles from a u.s air force base jets showed up in the area but they left before this big thing came in and it wasn't like they were i thought maybe they run the other ones off but what they were doing was making sure there was no one around and this thing come in from outer space and flew right over my location and uh, you've seen the video now so hopefully it's a little clearer. Thank you. So uh, what happened after that? Did, it, did things started to increase as the the years went on? Well, you know, at this time I, I was getting UFO pictures. I was looking for solid evidence to prove to the scholars and skeptics that we're being visited by creatures from out of this world. And I'm doing anything I can. And I'm catching a lot of heat in the process, man. Yeah. I've got... <laughs> my youtube channel is blowing up i've got people on my side i got people against me i got trolls going in there attacking anybody who has anything positive to say uh, odd stuff going on i almost i almost got taken out and uh, at one point it was just there was a couple incidents where i'd almost like uh, i almost got killed by a truck that run across the interstate and i, I got a I went and got a flu shot and almost died in the hospital like a few hours after the shot. And, uh, and I thought, man, it's almost like somebody's trying to take me out, you know? And, uh, so I, I, I wrote the, I, I said, I, you know, I got to write a book. I got to get this in paper. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I got, I wrote the ebook just to get it on paper. It's a memoir, you know, I didn't, I just wanted to tell the story before something happened. And it looked like something might at that time, you know, when I started writing that book, it was, it was because I thought the story, you know, if I, you kill the man, you kill the story. And I, and I didn't have my story in paper. So it, nobody would know it. It would just, and I thought, well, you know, 
I, I, so I started writing the book just to get it on paper, you know, so the story, even if I did die, the story wouldn't die. So, and that, that was the whole reason behind the book, writing the book, you know, and that was the hardest thing I've ever done was write a book, man. Yeah. It's just a nightmare because anymore, anymore, you're not just a writer, you're the publisher, you know, you got to, uh, I had never worked with word before. I didn't, <laughs> and, my God, it's so frustrating for a guy like me who grew up in my age to, to try to learn word. I mean, you, I type one too many letters and then it just scrambles the whole thing. It looked like dice, just somebody throw it across the page, you know, and just messes everything you just did up. You know, I was like, I don't know who invented word. They ought to be strung up. <laughs> Didn't your friend die six months after the laser event? Yeah, that, that was odd too, you know, and, and, and uh, to this day, I, I don't know if, uh, but I know after he seen what he seen and I told him about the experience the next day, he, man, he reinforced his house. <laughs> he, he put storm windows on it. He, he put strong doors. He patched places where they couldn't get to him. You know, I thought he was, a, and, uh, but I don't know, you know, I almost wonder that if they didn't get to him, they didn't show up in there and he fought what he fought the force that was holding him down so hard. It just stopped his heart. Maybe it killed him. Uh, he, he was in his bed when he died, you know, and it, he wasn't uh, that old, man. It, it, yeah, he, he wasn't that uh, old, and okay. and he yeah, I was over there. And I thought, man, and he my, we ain't, his his mail's in the mailbox, his snow's undisturbed around his house, his pickup hasn't moved, and we went over. And I'm I was over there, and I said I called his sister. And I said, man, we got to go. Uh, I said I can't get him to answer the phone, and I said I don't know what to do, but she said we'll we'll get the police to go in there and see if he's all right you know so i called the police the police broke in his house and the the, the cop came back out and said he's in there but he's not alive and, he, and they wouldn't let me in there because i wasn't family but you know yeah. I, was, I watched him carry him out you know and he's he is my best friend man he was a, he was my witness you know and, and to this day i wonder you know, maybe something did happen that it caused him to have a heart attack because his face he had the his face looked like he had seen something total horror oh i mean he just had an expression on his his death face man that just looked like he had seen something that just scared the living heck out of him you know not like he died in peace like he was sorry yeah wow so did so because you, you, you've had an event uh, in 2017 so what happened did anything happen of consequence between those years yeah, in 2017, the, the ET finally made contact. And, okay. and I, you know, I was looking for physical craft. I was looking for trying to get more pictures and video. And then all of a sudden, this, this whole experience took a weird turn. Uh, they showed up in my bedroom and they, they pulled me out of my sleeping body for a conversation. <laughs> and, and I've never had anything like that happen. You know, it, it, I didn't, it wasn't spiritual. I'm not a spiritual meditator. I, I don't do out of body experiences. I'm not an astral traveler. I'm an oil field worker and didn't really buy into that stuff. I didn't even think it was even possible for your, I thought, you know, if your spirit leaves your body, you're dead, you know, yeah. it's it game over, you know, and that's kind of the way I felt, but I was, I, I was laying there, I was sleeping and, I, and, uh, and I had this, I had this mini dream. There was two females grabbing my arms, trying to pull me. And I thought, man, that's, and I, and then I slipped out of their grasp and I, and I, and I fell back to sleep and I thought, man, that was an odd little dream. And I started going into, I started trying to go back to sleep and all of a sudden they got me again. And this time they're pulling me and, uh, and then I look up and, and one of them looks at me and she says, help us. And I realized that I felt like they're trying to pull me out of something. I'm I feel like I'm stuck in the mud or stuck in a mud hole. So I start struggling to get loose and they're pulling my arms the best they can. And finally, uh, they pull me loose. And all of a sudden, I'm right there, you know, looking at them. I'm going, oh, my God, thank you, man. I said, I was really stuck back there, you know, thank you. And she goes, no, we're, we're really sorry for disturbing your rest, you know. And oh. uh, she said, we, 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 you know, we hate to interrupt your sleep, but she, we need to have a conversation. And, and I thought, and I start looking around. I realize I'm standing in my bedroom and uh, there's a body in, in my bed you know, where I normally sleep now. <laughs> and I'm like thinking, well, you know, what the heck is going on here? I thought what, my wife playing a joke on me or what, you know, uh, there's a funny joke on the, on the UFO guy, you know, ha ha, you know, and, but I know her friends, this ain't any of her friends that I know. <laughs> and, 
And she goes, we're not from your world. We're from another world. We need to have a conversation, you know? And, uh, and I looked in one's, I thought, man, if you know, she's dressed up for the part, she looks really good. I mean, she has blue skin. She's got a big red ruby that's glued to her cheek. She's got like a diamond glued to her forehead. She's got a tattoo on the other cheek. And uh, yeah. And then the other one, I look over at the other one. The other one, uh, she's a uh, she has more muscle than the the other one's tall and athletic, but the other one is a little bit shorter and a lot more muscle. Must has a lot more muscle tone. And she has big hair and it, and you could almost see some, it looked like ears sticking through her hair. And then when I looked, she's definitely got a human face, but when I looked from her, from her tip of her nose turns into a cat's nose and her, and her chin and mouth or a cat, like a lion's mouth. And she's got these trim whiskers coming out of her top lips. They look like porcupine quills that are trimmed off. And I thought, you know, if this is a costume, this is a dadgum good one. <laughs> you know, they spent some time on this. And I'm going, okay, with it. You know, these girls, these girls ain't from around here. I'm, you know, after seeing oh. all the stuff I've seen, I realized, okay, this, this is the real deal. You know, I'm starting to feel the weight of this conversation. You know, I'm talking to ET right here for the first time ever. I don't know if I'm the only one or if I'm one of many. But I do know, I feel the weight of this conversation is like I'm representing every man, woman, child on planet Earth when I'm communicating oh. with these things. So I'd better watch my P's and Q's and, and try to get along with them. And, uh, you know, I was going, oh, my God, this is ET. This is this is first contact. This is what this is. First contact with uh, extraterrestrial beings, you know. And they had been seeing me. They had been watching me. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they'd been hanging around They and, and I realized finally later that they, that where, the, where they're at, you know, and they told me, cause my wife comes walking through the bedroom when I'm sitting here talking to these two females and my, I could see my wife is plain as day. And they told me, they said, uh, you can't see or hear, hear us from here. They said, but we could, see, we could see and hear everything. My wife walked right by us. Now I'm standing here talking to two females right here by my bed. My wife is like eight feet away, walking by on her way to the bathroom. And I'm thinking, and they said, well, she said they, you, they can't see or hear us from here, you know? And I'm, and I said, you know, I said, your, your body's in bed. And I'm looking down there. There's by God, there's a, there's a body in my bed. There's where I normally sleep, but I want to get a better look at it. The light, the lighting's okay, but it's not great. So, cause it's about nine o'clock in the morning when all this is taking place, there's light coming in around the windows and light coming in from the kitchen and the bathroom. So it's not completely dark, but it's not really bright either. So I wanted, I wanted to walk over there and look down and make sure it was me. So I tried to take a step and I fell forward and, and I thought I was falling. So I stuck my hand out uh, and my hand hit on the, about the knee area of the body in the bed and I was supporting myself. And then all of a sudden my hand went through the knee, like I had broken it. And then I could feel the, the mattress underneath it. I could feel the softness of the mattress on the other side of the bone. And then I jerked my hand back like, Oh my God, man, I just broke this guy's leg. Oh, <laughs> and, no. and then I'm kind of freaking out Then I looked down at my knees. Why did I stumble? And my knees are in buried, buried in the bed there. I'm like, it looks like I don't have any legs from the knee down. Like I've, my knees yeah. are chopped off at the bed. I could, it looks like my knees go right to the, but they actually go through the bed. They're in the bed. Well, they grabbed me by the arms and they said, you're okay. You're, you'll be all right. You know, uh, and they said, and, it, and this, in this place, they said, you, you, you can move to solid matter. And they walked, they waited me out of the bed. They grabbed me by the arms. They waited me out of the bed. And I thought, my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you, then once I waited, I came out of the bed, you could see my legs. It's plain. I could see my legs, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh, Okay. Well, and she said, now take your hand and put it on her face. The, the blue lady told me to put my hand on the cat lady's face. She said, okay, now push. So I start. I could feel her hair. I could feel her skin. And she said, now push. So I started pushing and my hand started sinking into her head and I could feel her skull. And she said, keep going. And I pushed a little more and I could, I could feel her brain matter. Ooh. And it, it and then I pulled my hand back. I said, Oh, that's gross. And it felt like my hand was wet, but my hand was perfectly dry, but I could feel the wetness uh, inside her skull. And uh, I don't know why they wanted me to do that, but they, they were just showing me. I said, Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. You know, you can move to solid matter here. You can walk through walls. And, uh, and apparently 
And my wife comes walking out of the bedroom and she stops. Okay. But she, it freaks the cat. It freaks the cat lady out. Cause she's looking over at us and pauses. And, and she looks at the blue, the blue lady. And she says, can't she see us? And the blue lady says, no, no. She's looking at him and she's pointed towards my body in the bed. And then my wife paused for a second. And then she went on. I later asked her, I said, uh, I said, we saw this. Why do you do that? She said, she said, well, you, you have some sleep apnea and I worry to make sure you're breathing. All right. She said, so sometimes when I, when you're sleeping, I'll, I'll stop and I'll pause and I'll wait and see if I can see your chest rise up down. I know you're all right. So then I'll go about my business. You know, I never uh, knew she did that, but she said, yeah, I do do that. And I actually saw it and it freaked the ET out when she did do it. So, and I seen the clothes she's wearing and everything, you know, and she left the room. So we're, continue to have our little conversation i said i said okay i said i understand you can move to solid matter here they can't see her or hear us and uh, i said i said so and she said this is where the people of your world are going to meet the people of our world and i said the people of our world are interested and they've observed your people of your world and they want to make contact and they've demanded to make contact it said unlike your science science and technology our science and technology goes to serve the, the desires of our people and our people have demanded to contact with us and uh, and we want to ask you how to how in your opinion we should go, go about this you know and i said yeah i understand she goes she said in this place we when we meet here we're safe from bacterial and viral harm and physical harm and this is the place that, that that's ideal for us to meet and I said, yeah, I, I see. I said, a weapon wouldn't even work here. Well, when I said I said that, the blue lady looked at the cat lady and they kind of looked at each other like, I don't know, we probably, I don't know if we should touch this or not. And she says, well, she says, we have weapons here, but we would never use them on you. So I was like, okay, so we ain't got weapons that would work here, but you've got weapons that work here. And she said, yeah, sadly, uh, wars and battles have been fought here, you know, in this oh. place. And and she she went on to tell me she said that they they came in the later the latter part of the 40s and said our nuclear testing sent light and radiation off their, their interdimensional world and they and they had been in an interdimensional war with some species some very malevolent species that had attacked them without provocation and came in there and destroyed about a third of their planet with one giant bomb Oh. And, and they had threatened their fed, their community. They had, they had like a federation of planets that they were, they, they traded with, they got along with, they worked with. And, and they had told them, said, it, said, you're all going to get what we did to these guys if you don't do what we say. So they basically, they came in with that provocation and demanded to, to rule them. And they thought, well, you know, well, they'll take some resources or whatever and go away. And she said, it, they found out that it, she wouldn't even tell me what they did, but it, apparently it was so hideous that they decided they'd rather die fighting them than to live under them. And uh, so they, they started, uh, they, they, they gathered together and he, she said, imagine finding an enemy that can show up without warning, uh, just there. They said, you can't see them coming. They're there. They said they had interdimensional technology. We didn't. That's, that's where they, but they, they had overestimated that they can't, they didn't have, they couldn't, blow up everybody like they did this one planet they thought they didn't do it you know so they overstated their their power and you know and and they said that when we first came here in the latter 40s we were investigating that uh, that, that there may be somebody here in alliance with these guys or may this may have been a, a a staging area for that interdimensional attack so they came over here very you know and the latter part of the, and i almost wonder if they did if these ain't the guys that shot down the guys in roswell you know, they said the, the craft in Roswell crashed. Maybe they didn't get craft. Maybe these guys came in here and because this is the latter part of the 40s, just like they said. And they came over here for the hunt for the bad guys. They wasn't here to make friends. They came over here and, and, and people say, well, they, they talk to you telepathy. No, they you they talked to me with their mouths. They spoke English, a very proper English. And the, the cat lady, she had, a, she had a trouble speaking English because her mouth wasn't built right to make certain words. But like a person with a speech impediment, she was smart enough that when when something wouldn't work, she could change it or reword it, okay, so that it would work and not make the same mistake trying to say the same thing uh, again. So you could tell that she was having trouble talking, and 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 they said, "Well, I don't see how they would." I was like, "Man, I speak English. I've been here since 1960. They've been here since 1947 or whatever, well, you know." 
So why wouldn't they know how to speak English? They've been here longer than me, you know? And, uh, and I'm pretty sure these, these guys were, you can see one of my videos where we were making a UFO video in my house and it was like ET tried to show us that they were listening. I think there's a video on my Ronnie Dawson YouTube channel where I was an extraterrestrial caught on camera. And it's this, I'm doing this UFO video and we've seen this anomaly and we slowed it down and we turned the brightness up all the way. And you can almost see an ET It's almost like ET was there uh, listening to us. And they wanted to show us that they're right here. We're right here, you know, and I could see what, you know, when they took me here, this is, they could be right here beside you. You would never know it unless they decided to try to show you somehow that they were here. So, well, there was one with uh, that looked like a ghost or yeah, oh. that's it. That's the one. Yeah. It looks like a ghost right next to my head. And actually yeah. this thing is a little ball it flies around and shoots into my head. And then, if you look in my mouth while I'm talking, because it slowed down and not only is it, the brightness is turned up, it's slowed down. You can look in my mouth while I'm talking. All of a sudden this thing appears. It looks inside my mouth, looking out like to see if the camera's still on or something. Mm -hmm. It's really freaky, man. I've had people say, man, that's the best paranormal evidence I've ever seen, you know, because we caught it in high definition. It's in high definition footage at full speed. It's hard to catch. Cause it's really flying around there. When you slow it down, you turn the brightness all the way up. It really makes it spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that this is something really paranormally odd. Did the two females give you their name? They never, not at any point did they ever tell me, you know, this is my name. This is her name. Uh, they called it my friend. Uh, the cat, the cat lady was apparently their geneticist. She said, this is our geneticist. Now, the blue lady, I don't know if she's a pilot or what she is. She, I, I have no idea, but I know that there's a red ruby glued to her face. And I know uh, I looked in her eyes and, and her eyes were about as big as our eye sockets. And, and, I, and I got really close to her face and it freaked her out. And, and I mean, I got really close and I looked and her eyes were blue, not black. And, and they had white specks in them. And I said, oh, she goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm just, I want to get a good look at your eyes. And she said, I said, they're beautiful. And she goes, well, well, you know, thank you. But she goes, I said, they got this white specks in them. She goes, yeah. She said, that's a, a radioactive bleach. And that's from, from living too close to the galactic center. And a, a, sadly, a side effect, you know, uh, wow. living that close to the galactic center. And, but this is, they had these little white specks. It looked like in her iris, you know? And, uh, and, and she wow. goes, she said, tell the people of your world that when, when it comes time to meet the people of our world, all we ask is that there be no physical contact unless, uh, uh, a request is made and a permission is granted. Okay. So basically what they're, she, what they're saying, it sounds to me like a first rule of contact. It's like, don't, you know, if you want to touch us, ask for permission first and then if you get a positive response then you can go ahead and hug them or shake their hands or whatever you want to do but you know, the, the cat lady they didn't mind at all touching me when i was they felt like i was in a bind they didn't mind coming to my rescue when i was falling into bed you know it's like so um, but i guess as an open rule they just don't they don't want physical contact unless you ask permission first makes sense so and she said tell the people of your world that so i, I always try to when i and I, some, man, I, sometimes I forget, I get excited telling the story and I forget, but if that's an important part, because that's what I was supposed to tell you. Now, the, the cat lady, she's, she's a geneticist and, and they used the word, she said, uh, she said our double helix uh, genetic model, you know, she said, uh, said, we're close to being able to solve most of our own diseases. They said uh, they use a triple helix model. And she said, I should tell somebody uh, that we should should modify our, our, our genetic model to a triple helix and really? she said then you'll be able to cure most of your diseases and she said but then you're going to have a population she said you're going to have a population problem you know i said and they said we could we could cure mo most of your diseases right now she said but uh, we, we're not allowed to increase the suffering said so we're the suffering in a few years would be worse than uh dying from the diseases that's killing us we were like there'd be too many people and there wouldn't be enough food you know if nobody died <laughs> i guess okay. i don't know that's the way it sounded to me is like if everybody just stopped dying we would really be in trouble pretty quickly did they give you a message regarding upcoming events oh they just said that uh 
you know, they, they said the new, they talked about the nuclear testing and they said that, uh, you know, they were the other, they were looking for a species that they had been at war with. And, and they said, and then she also said that they had, a, they had managed to kill one of them. They had, they managed to kill one of them and, uh, and shoot its craft down. And on, the, on one of their planets, that's, that's like, uh, our grand, their grand Canyon, like all people from all the other planets is like an intergalactic, uh, um, uh, I guess tourism site like people come to see this creature people come to see the craft that they shot down and killed and it's on display and and the people come to see this thing and uh apparently if they find these guys again uh it's you know it's not over you know and and they've learned they had to they had to get up to speed on interdimensional travel and they are now they're capable of going back and forth and and uh and the weird thing was i remember i asked him i said it i said is it I remember what Stan, I think it was Stan Freeman told me, said, I asked him to show you how they got here. And, and I asked him, I said, Can, is it possible you could show me how you got here? She goes, yeah, 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 we can do it. But, you know, they kind of like, oh, man, we ain't got time for this. But yeah, yeah. And they said, all you have to do is walk through the wall right here. And they show me. Well, right here where the walls, they have to, I got this glass picture, right? And there's a picture with the glass over it. So I'm going to it. And, and and this glass is touching my face and I, and they said, just go, you'll be all right. Just go through the wall and, and you'll be able to see how we got here. And I think there was some miscommunication. I meant, I think they meant for me to look, to, to lean and look through the wall, but I actually thought they meant to walk through the wall. I didn't know what I was walking into, but my glass, my face was touching this glass. I was afraid it was going to break, break. So I was going really slow and it seemed like it irritated them. Go, you're fine. Go. <laughs> So I started moving through this glass. I could feel it moving through my face. I could feel it moving through my brain. I could feel the sheetrock passing through my body and my, and it felt really odd in my abdomen. It's like my stomach knows how it feels to have guts in it, but all of a sudden now it knows how to, it feels to have sheetrock in it. So it's, it didn't hurt, but it's a very odd, uncomfortable feeling. You like, you wouldn't want to just stand in the wall, even though you could. And as I was going in the wall, I felt a stud inside the wall go through my right shoulder. Like I had a, it ain't like you could just walk through it like smoke. He had to struggle through it. So I had to like struggle through the solid matter to get through it. And then uh, I finally, I struggled through this, this stud that was going through my right shoulder. And then I, I, it was complete. All I could see was blackness. And then all of a sudden I took one more step and, and I fell right out of this thing. I was in zero gravity. I was in outer space. And I was, and I was floating in zero gravity and I wasn't, I wasn't freezing cold. I didn't have, need oxygen to breathe, but I guess because when you're in this place, you don't need the physical things. That's a, that's a, that's a physical thing. Uh, whatever I was, a spiritual consciousness or whatever, I didn't need air. I didn't feel, I never felt hot or cold. Now I could feel soft or hard. I could, I could feel what felt like moisture, but I couldn't, but my hand wouldn't be wet, but it would feel moist. So there's certain things about this place that's very odd, but I never felt hot or cold. I walked right into outer space off this alien planet, and 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 I thought, my, I don't know how I got here. I didn't, I wasn't expecting this. I I didn't know what I was expecting, but when I walked through there and fit, I don't think they intended for me to walk out of this thing. I think I was just supposed to look. I look like look through it. And then I could see all this stuff without falling out in outer space, but I fell. I took one step too many. Now I'm floating in zero gravity. I'm doing this slow forward head flip. And I'm taking all this in. There's the alien planet over there. It's got three major continents. It's got a thin ocean. It's got a frosty North and South pole. That's not completely icy like Antarctica, but you could tell it's got like a frost. I didn't see any clouds, but I seen like uh, there was mist over certain areas of the planet. Closer to the ocean, there was really heavily wooded green, like jungle area. And then there was a large desert area that looked like red rock burnt area. And, and she told me that that's where the, that's where they, that's the area that got destroyed. Uh, that's the area that the, the, that the malevolent ET hit and, and, uh, and killed. I, I, she told me it was, it was a bunch. It was like a billion people or something like that. And, uh, and i mean this thing but you could see desert then you could see a little bit of jungle near the oceans and and the oceans were thin that man not near uh, like big oceans like we have but the water is, was blue looking and pretty and you could almost see the beaches and i was in outer space looking down at this thing from maybe 
about where the I guess the International Space Station would be, you know. And this planet don't it's not as big as Earth. It looks smaller than Earth. I could see what I thought was the sun, but actually I I, I kind of I think it was like a, a moon catching the light of a sun that I couldn't see. I'm looking at the back side of the planet. I'm looking at the dark side of the planet. But you have to realize up up in the sky there's the galactic center and all these suns are trapped in the are trapped in the circle of this thing being sucked in and there's so much light at nighttime it never gets dark it could never get dark there like it does here and and I, so i'm realizing i'm looking at the back side of this i'm looking at the dark side of the planet but it's not dark it's light enough that i can see everything and the sun i can't see is it's hidden from the on the other side of the planet and this ugly looking rocky moon goes floating between me and the planet it's like another moon and this moon looks strangely similar to phobos around mars man i mean it's it's solid rock it's barely even round you can see meteor impacts on it but i know i've seen i've looked really hard at phobos it's, it's not phobos but it's a rocky looking moon very similar to phobos and it passes between me and the planet and so i'm starting to kind of get seasick because i'm doing this slow forward head flip now my head is straight down and okay i'm thinking okay now I can look back at where I came from, see what see what I came out of, you know. And I don't know if it's a ship or what. Well, I start coming back up and I start looking, and this is a perfectly square black box floating in outer space. No lights on it, no technology, solid black. It's a solid black box just floating in outer space. And this is what I walked out of. This is what they put over my room. I think they just moved this thing over my bedroom. And inside it is my my bedroom, and outside it is wherever the heck this is at. God only knows where this is at, man. There is no telling where this is at. I don't know how, how I have no idea how it works. I don't know how they got it here. I don't know how they move it around. I don't know if it's like a 3D printer and they just, you know, it's it's like one thing in two places. I have no idea how it works, but I know when I walked out at wall, I was not expecting to fall into outer space. And I could see that I could see the galactic center or whatever that thing was. I could see all the suns caught in it. It's beautiful and scary and horrifying at the same time, man. I mean, just it was like thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of planets caught in the circle of this thing being sucked in, you know, and beautiful and scary at the same time. Do you know why it came to you? I have no idea, man. You know, of all the people on earth, <laughs> yeah. why me? You know, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I think they were watching me. I think they followed me home. I think they hung around and, and uh, I, I get the feeling they, maybe they like me. I don't know. I mean, uh, I got animals. I got animals. I got cats. I got dogs, man. We got right now. We got turtles. We got frogs. We have lizards. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty entertaining over here, and uh, yeah, we got a family, kids, wife. You know, we got a greenhouse, we got pond in the backyard. We had turtles in it at one point, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, and I appreciate sure those guys are hanging around, and I don't know if they were following me, studying me, or what. You know, at one point they told me they had clothing on. And, and they had the, the blue lady had like exercise clothing on. She said, yes. She said, the people of our world have watched your world. Said some of your clothing has become very popular on our world. And they cool. said, we make them out of fabrics on our planet. She said, yoga pants. And she rubbed her legs and looked at me so soft. <laughs> <laughs> it was like our clothing. And, and the cat lady, she was wearing blue jeans, like designer blue jeans and a white blouse. She said, designer blue jeans, white blouse. She goes, these are the things that have become very popular with the women on our planet she said now the men they're a little frustrated because she said we had ritualistic clothing that we wore during uh, certain rituals she goes but daily but clothing on a daily basis uh, you know they really didn't have any but now that they have seen our world they've seen our people and what we wear and they said uh, the a lot of our clothing items have become popular over there they, they said we wore them to make you feel more comfortable you know and ah uh, okay interesting you know pretty cool very cool but, but it gets it gets odd after this because she, she said you know we've been tasked with connecting taking collecting a genetic sample she said would you be willing to would you be willing to help us you know and i i thought at this point man you know 
you know, I feel the weight of this conversation. I represent every human on this planet. I re represent humanity as a whole. You want to, you want to do whatever it takes to appease these guys, to be friendly with these guys, yeah. to stay in good with these guys. And I'm like, you know, I said, look, you know, whatever you need, you know, I'm, I'm willing to give you, I, you know, I'll gladly help you do whatever you need, you know, whatever you need to do, I, I'll help you do it. And she said, I said, whatever it takes for the people of your world to meet the people of our world. I said, I, I'll help you in that. If I can be of help, I'm willing to help you. And I thought, okay, well, this, I said, well, how do you, how do you intend on getting this genetic sample? And she said, well, our genetics here. She said, if you wouldn't mind, she would, if you could just have sex with her, she could get everything she would need from that. And I'm going, <laughs> did, I, did I just hear that right? So just, you want me to have sex with the cat lady? And she goes, if you could, you just have sex with her and she could, you could get everything you need. She said, you don't have to. And, and I, I was like, oh, this is okay. This is odd. And she said, uh, and she kind of went over and she kind of whispered in my ear. She said, she said, yeah, you have to understand. She said on their world, uh, she said, they have sex. Like the people of your world uh, might shake hand or smile at a stranger. You know, she said, so sex to them is like completely uninhibited. It's like, it's no big deal. You know, sex to them is no big deal. And, uh, and she said, even the people in my world think it's odd. <laughs> you know, so they kind of told me that the people that she's from a different planet, the cat lady is probably from a different planet than the blue lady is. They're two different species, but yet they're working together. And even on the big ship, the mothership that flew over me, I've seen three different species on it that are different. And they're all huge species. I mean, there's a there's one that looks like a, a dog with horns. Uh, there's a giant insectoid. And then there's something that looks like something off the job of the hood off of the Star Wars. I mean, it's a big snail looking thing with arms. And it looks a lot like job of the hood on the Star Wars thing. And it's sitting on the surface of the craft. And, and you can see one of its arms move as a craft. I looked through the frame and you can see one of its arms because I said, is that arms? And then I, I started looking through the, the still frame footage and you can see its arm move at one point. And I'm going, <laughs> that thing's got arms and the arms are moving. And so the, this is a, and, and they said they, they're, they're a collective of planets that are working together, you know? So they're not just one planet. It's, and, and, and they're close to the galactic center. So I'm thinking that maybe there is a planet that's going in, they're getting destroyed, they're rescuing the intelligent life off of it, which makes sense. You know, if you're near a galactic center and, and there's the planets are getting sucked in and destroyed, if there's intelligent life there and you have the ability to help, why wouldn't you? So that would explain the, the different species that they've all working together for the same federation of planets or whatever. God only knows where this place is at. They never told me the name of it. I don't know where we probably couldn't see it or we wouldn't even know. I don't even know if it's even in our dimension. It may be in a whole dimension opposite, of, you know, somewhere else. So how they got here, I don't know how the black box works. But, you know, I thought it was kind of weird. I was one of the jets off the coast of Florida. There was a black box flew right between two military jets. Did you ever see that footage? It was like the, as long with the Tic Tac footage and some of that other footage. Okay. There's a, there's a black box flew right between two jets and they caught it on their camera. And I'm going, yeah, I know what that box is. <laughs> That's a Stargate, a Stargate right between two of our jets, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I'd already drew the drawing. I'm going, yeah, see, uh, I know exactly. That's a Stargate being transported to somewhere. And it went right between a couple of our jets and they caught it on camera. You know? Wow. Okay. <laughs> so what, ha what happened after the, your agreement for the, uh, the thing to happen yeah well the blue lady said she'd step out so that this this cat lady she starts stripping her clothing off and uh and i'm thinking man i don't even, you know this is, i don't even know if i can make this work or i don't know how i'm gonna pull this off uh i'm gonna, i guess i'll try to pull it off you know I'll just do the best i can well anyway so and then she said well she goes do you think i'm as pretty as your wife and i said well I, I, well, I know enough about women. When a woman asks you that, you'd better say yes. Yeah. So I was like, well, yeah, you're very pretty, you know? And she says, I've been watching you. And she said, I've been watching you and your wife. And she jumped up on the bed in a, a sexual position that we, we have used many times where she's on top of the bed and I'm standing beside the bed. 
And I'm going, oh my God, she has. She's been what? She has seen every dad gum thing. There was no doubt when she did that that she has watched us. You know, nobody knew that. Nobody knew that, but she knew it. I was like, oh. And one time my wife said, I swear to God, there was something watching me from the dark. And I was going, oh my God, yeah. And I thought, oh. And so she strips clothes up and she's got this tail. There's this big, she got this huge tail. It's, it's a stock base of it. It's, it's big. This thing is flicking back and forth like this. And she has these beautiful stripes. I had no idea that she, when she took her clothes off, she had these black stripes that went around her. She had like a felt, like a, like a short, really short hair, like, you, like a lion might have with these black stripes that went around her, almost like zebra stripes, but they're black and they, and they go all the way up and down her legs and stuff. And it's very, very pretty, very unique. And she's jumping on bed. She said, I want you to make me feel like your wife feels, you know? And uh, I'm going, oh, man. And then guess who comes walking through my room? My wife comes walking through the room. So she's up on the bed trying to get ready for sex. And here comes my wife walking through the room. And I'm going, oh, my God, that's per this is like perfect timing. And my wife walks right by her. And, and she looked at it. She said, they, they can't hear or see us, you know? And uh, my wife comes walking back through and she goes, she goes, she goes, lady, is it okay if I have sex with your husband? And, and my wife don't hear her. She just keeps walking, you know? And I'm going, oh my God. Okay. And she goes, she said, look, it's, it's not like you're che cheating on her. Your physical body's right here in bed, you know? So she's like, and I'm going, well, you know, she just got a point, you know, is it really your fit? My physical body is right there. This is not a physical body that I'm in. I, this I don't know. I don't know how this would, you know, work, you know, but I'm like, all right, let's just get this over with. So, you know, let's just get it over with, you know? So, well, anyway, this tail's flipping, flicking back and forth. Right. Well, the thing, it kind of wraps around my shoulder and I thought, well, this could be cool, but then it starts flicking in my face. So I'm like, okay, this ain't going to work. So I, so I have to grab this tail and I have to pin it, pin it down to her hip. So, I give the ET their genetic sample as fast as I can get it over with. And anyway, so, and she jumps up, she jumps up on the bed. And like I said, you have to understand you could, you could sit on a bed, you can stand on the bed or you can walk through a bed in this place. And she jumps up on the bed and then she, she reaches down there beside her and she pulls out this technology. It's, it's like a glass beaker. It's got a yellow handle. It's got these white array of lights that are running up and down on it. She sticks it between her legs and she shoots the ejaculate into it. And this ejaculate is sloshing around in this, in this uh, tube and these lights are shining all over it. And, the, and these little lights come on in the yellow handle of it. It almost looks like one of the old syrup things, like, you, like a syrup uh, thing, like you see at a pancake house or something. It's got like a sliding top on it. And, uh, and this thing, this light shining on it. And, and then she was talking about, you know, we, we, we'd rather work uh, with raw material. You know, she, she said, we, we had to synthesize it here because of where we're at. She goes, but we really like uh, working with raw material. And I said, well, I said, uh, I, I've had a vasectomy. I said, I've had a vasectomy. And uh, I said, so I don't, you know, I don't know how well uh, I don't know if that's going to affect it or not. And she goes, we can, we can reverse it for you if you'd like. And I said, no, no, I went through a lot of trouble. I went through a lot of pain to get that. She just, I said, no, no, I just as soon leave it like it is, you know, but they, what she offered, she goes, we can reverse it if you like. And I'm going, no, 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 no. I went through a lot of pain to get that. So let's just leave that, you know? And uh, anyway, so they, the blue lady's back, back in there and she goes, and, and I hear him talking. She says, okay, save some for the clone. She says, save some for the clone program. And I'm going, uh Oh, I, I know what clone means. They're going to, they're, they're going to do. And she said, you should, she said, just think, she said, uh, your offspring will see new worlds. And uh, I said, yeah, but it's, it's kids. I'll never meet or in, in worlds. I'll never see, you know? And uh, she goes, Oh, and, and then the, the blue lady, she, she comes back in and, and she says, okay, save, save enough for the clone program. So I, I know then that they're going to, they're going to use some of it to, for the clone program. I mean, I guess they're going to clone me. And uh, they didn't say anything more about what they were going to do with the clone. But then she said, well, she said, well, 
uh, we need to know how, how do you think the people of our world should make contact with the people of your world? She, she, what would be your suggestion that we could pass on to the others? And, and I thought about it for a minute. I said, first of all, I said, you're going to have to give that guy right there in that bed, you're going to have to give him a piece of alien material that's not from this earth, that does something that we can't do, that's made out of stuff that we don't have, that I can give to the skeptics and scholars and, and prove to them that I'm in conversation with you. I said, otherwise, they're never going to believe me. They're just going to think I'm a liar because people in this world lie to do things. And she acted kind of disappointed. And I said, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, even better than that, I said, I said, a global display of alien presence. I said, bring a huge craft in, fly it around the earth until everybody's seen it and it won't be no denying that you're here. I said, that's my suggestion. And she goes, okay. She said, we'll be happy to pass it on to the others. And so, I said, they said, well, th you know, thank you for assisting us and everything. And I, and uh, she said, it's we got to go and it's just time to get you back now. And I'm looking at my body there in bed and going, how am I going to, how do I do this? How am I going to get back in there? And she said, well, you can just, just lay on top of yourself. And uh, so I just, I went over beside the bed and I just laid on top of myself and, and nothing happened. I just laid, and I was thinking, man, you know, that. I don't know if these guys are not very good at this or what, but I looked up back at her and I said, look, it's not working, you know? And she said, all right, all right, get back up. And she said, oh, okay, now leap onto yourself. And so I stood beside the bed and I leaped onto myself. And this time it felt like I fell five feet, man. My stomach, like if I didn't just, I should have just been fell about a foot, but instead it felt like I fell five feet and it felt like I hit pretty hard. And when, and when I hit, I woke up, my physical body woke up and I realized I'm in it. I'm back in my physical body. I'm awake. The room looked identical to the way it looked. My wife is wearing the same clothes that I seen her wearing when she walked through the bedroom those two times. The light coming around the windows is the same. The light coming in from the kitchen is the same. The light coming in from the bathroom is the same. The room looks identical as it did just seconds earlier. And I realized that I'm back in my physical body and I realized that the ET are probably still standing right there beside the bed looking at me. So I waved at him. I said, you know, I said, I'm back. I said, I made it. You know, thank you. And uh, I, I could not see him or hear him, but I had a feeling that they were there, you know? And so I'm going through life. You know, I, I see some UFO light. They put on a little light show for me every now and then. I don't know if they let me know that they're watching or let me know that they're still there. I don't even know what these lights mean or, or do really, but they're not craft. They're just lights. They put on, a, and I've caught some of these lights. They put them on the right. Dawson, Dawson family sees lights. My whole family got to see the lights and one of my son's friends, you know, so we filmed them on three different cameras. They put on a nice little light show for us at, out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and that you, there's no way to explain what the heck it was, but we caught it on three different. And I was excited. My, my first time, my wife and kids got to see something paranormal. And because they were like, Oh my, our dad's that stupid UFO guy, you know, he believes in that stupid stuff, but now they've actually seen some stuff. Now they're kind of a little bit, they're kind of like, well, yeah, we, we seen, we don't know what it was, but we saw something, you know, something really weird, mm -hmm. but we don't know what it was. They still, you know, they're kind of hard headed. So they still, ah, we don't know what it was, but it was pretty weird. Uh, but at least they, they opened their mind up a little bit to where they said, okay, maybe dad's not completely crazy. <laughs> you know, So I started, I started thinking, you know, I remember them saying that claw me, but how long would that take? Two and a half years. I started looking on the internet and they say it takes ET other experiencers and people have said, yeah, it takes ET to grow a clone into full adulthood, two and a half years. And I thought, and I hadn't seen anything except for some, for some lights, you know, nothing, nothing up close and personal, no more encounters. And I thought, man, maybe they're done with me. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's it, you know? And then I, I think it was uh, February, February, 2020, just out of the blue, man, uh, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. Uh, I think I got to go to work the next day. I'm sleeping like a baby, man. And uh, next thing I know, I wake up like in a box. It's some kind of glass thing. And, and, uh, and, and some people are opening the door and they helping me out of it. And I, and, and it's almost like I'm drunk or something because I can't walk right. And it's not because I'm drunk. It's because there's parts of my body not working. And, and I realize that it's like, 
It's somebody wearing, it's almost like people wearing uh, PPE in a medical. They're wearing like, uh, there's two stout guys wearing these white, weird white Jack Lane looking overalls that look like young military guys, uh, really strong, really young guys, stout. And uh, then there's this, there, there's this other, it's actually, the, it's the cat lady is who it is, but she's wearing this PPE over her nose and face. And all I could see is her huge eyes. You could tell it's not a human the eyes are too big. But other than that, she looks like she's in a surgeon's outfit. And they pulled me out of this box and, and, I, and I can't hardly walk because my leg will work and then my leg will stop. And then, so I fall into the table. Uh, I fall into this operating table and I, and I hit it pretty hard. And then I go over and there's this weird looking machine that's sitting over there. And it's, it, it's, it's got these weird looking arms and it's got these several balls that are one's big and then it's six inches and a smaller one and six inches and a smaller one, six inches and a smaller one. I bump into this thing and almost knock it over. And then this alien doctor comes, this very angry male alien doctor with huge green eyes comes up and says, he says he can't be in here. <laughs> you have to, he has to leave. You have to get him out of here until he, until he stabilizes. And he said, he can't be in, you know, we can't have him in here. And so everybody's escorting me out. He, he said, sir, he goes, you, you can't be in here. We'll bring you back. Uh, we'll bring back in a little while, but you, you have to leave now. I'm going, okay, all right. I'm, I'm trying to get out of here, but I'm, but my stuff ain't working right. Uh, I mean, my leg, I'll take a step. I'll be supporting my weight. I feel all right. And all of a sudden my leg will give out and I'll just try to fall. And those guys try to catch me. Sometimes they catch me. And other times I, I go to the plumb to the floor and they help me right back up immediately. And then I say, all right, I'm good. I'm good. I feel like I'm good. But as soon as I, I take a, I might take one step. All right. And the second step, my other knee will go out or something you know so very odd they leave me out of this surgery room and there's this there's this wall of air that you can kind of see through it but not real clearly and uh and that one of the guys goes through it ahead of me and i can see him break the plane of the air and the cat lady that's wearing the ppe she says now she said now this is a this is a uh a surgery environment in here and you don't want to break this plane for too long just pass through it as fast as you can so i noticed that it was like the 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 atmospheric pressure on each side of it was different because when you break the plane you could feel the air rushing by you and she said we don't want to lose our sterile environment she says so move through it quickly so when i noticed when i walked to this wall of air that you could feel the air rushing by you and and i moved through it like it's like it's nothing like it i mean it's not it's just it's weird it's really weird i don't know what kind of technology it is but i, I moved through this wall of air and then uh, basically at this point i'm walking out of like a military surgery it's a, like an old military surgery style it has flat doors actually it's green canvas so whatever this surgery room is is inside this military looking tent it's basically a military tent and i walk out of this tent and, you, and it looks just, just like your basic military tent i walked out of it there's there's where this playing is at there's green fields there's green grass everywhere and rolling hills there's these white houses and it almost looks like a military base because every house is identical and, and i think there's it has I, I don't know how many houses you couldn't count them i'd say a hundred maybe a hundred houses stretched, stretched across the hill maybe 200 you can see them all, but they all got white picket fences. Every house is built the same. And it's like 1950 styles house where the, the porch is actually built under the main structure of the house. And, uh, you know, so every house is identical. They got these white, white picket fences, but I didn't see any personal items in none of these houses. They got these big, huge roads. They actually walked me out of the tent. The tent set up in a road, a street, a nice paved street. And uh, I went out there and I fell down again. And I noticed when I fell down this time, you know, before you could walk through solid matter, right where I'm at now, I'm physical, man. And when I fell, it hurt. You could feel the impact of the ground when you hit. And I hit the ground and they would rush over and they would help me back up. And they'd say, oh, it hit. And, and she said, look, just sit down, sit down. And they, they put me on the curb of the street. And I used to work in road construction. I realized that, you know, where, I don't know where I'm at, but I'm, I'm looking down at the, at the street and, and the asphalt, like when we build a road, we, we spray asphalt down and then we sprinkle 
gravel on top of it you know well this street it looks like the the rocks are all the same size and they're ground up into some kind of mix and it's like stretched like carpet across the street and it's it's a really nice street and the and the curves are nice and the grass is well maintained and all the houses around there i don't see any personal items in none of them and the grass is well kept inside the yards but outside the yards is it's almost like you're looking at kansas or something like that i didn't see not one tree anywhere but there's just rolling hills of tall grass in between the houses and every house looks the same and all the and they all got white pick, picket fences the same i don't know it's, it's like it'd be a military base or something like that where all the houses have to look the same i don't know who lives here who built this thing i don't know you could tell it's like but then I'm sitting there and there's, and there's this other guy, he comes walking up after I fall down and he helps me up and he's a huge, he's a pretty heavy set guy and he's wearing these, uh, like, I don't know, it's like safari pants and he's got this flyer shirt and he's got this big straw hat on and this guy looks out of place. He doesn't look like he belongs there. You know, I'm on, I'm on an alien planet. I'm looking at alien, all the, all the doctor and all the nurses, there was a doctor, uh, the cat lady with all the PPE on and like two other nurses in there. There's like four of them all together in that operating room. And they're, and they're definitely ET. Now outside the tent, the, there's the, the cat lady comes out. There's the two stout guys that's wearing a Jack LaLanne looking exercise suits uh, that are picking, help picking me up whenever I fall down. Well, this weird guy comes up to, to help me. And I'm going, this guy looks really out of place. And uh, and he and she goes, hey, she goes, uh, she goes, meet Ronnie Dawson. And he and he looks at her, he goes, I, I'm I'm familiar with Ronnie Dawson. And uh, she said, No, she said, she said, I mean the Ronnie Dawson from back there. And then the guy goes, Oh, he said, Oh my, he said, Oh my God. He says, so he goes, he looked at me, he says, So this, so you're this your first trip, eh? And I'm going, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, it's my first trip, you know? And, and he goes, he said, well, he said, he said, I, he said, I guess you figured out this is, this isn't earth, huh? And I said, well, I was wondering where, where we were at. And he said, well, he said, he said, look at that sun. That'd be your first clue. I looked up at the sun, man, this sun is large in the sky. And it's not bright like our sun. You look at our sun, it immediately burns your eyes. You could, you could almost look at this sun for a couple of seconds before it started hurting your eyes. And you could almost see the, it was larger and you could almost see the flames off the, on the surface of it. And I thought, okay, yeah, that is definitely not our sun. And he, I said, well, where are we at? He said, he said, I don't know. He goes, but I know it ain't earth. And uh, he said, I don't know where it's at. And uh, I said, I said, what, my God, man. I said, what are you doing here? I mean, he looked out of place. I mean, he looked like he's on vacation or something, you know? And, uh, and then the cat lady came up to me and she said, okay, now we, uh, we had to give you a, a, a little vaccination. Uh, we had to protect our interests. And, and this is back when the COVID's going off back here in February, 2020, you know, we're just starting to hear about it. We're not really seeing a lot of it, but she said, we had to give you a little vaccination uh, to protect our interests. You know, I said, we can't afford to lose you. And I looked and she said, it's on the back of your left leg. And I looked on the back of my left leg and there wasn't nothing there. There wasn't anything there. She said, no, she said on your back there. She pointed back. She said, no, back there, we give you a vaccination. And I'm going, oh, okay. Not here. this. Yeah. On this body. And I'm looking this, this body is wearing, uh, man, and I'm dressed very oddly. I'm wearing these like stretchy shorts, like athletic shorts, but they, but the, they feel like they're swim shorts on the inside. They have a netting that supports you. And I have these two socks on Man, I ain't seen two socks since like, the 70s you know those two socks that go all the way up to your ankles and i'm looking and the shoes they the shoes i'm wearing are like converse lace-up shoes you know uh, but when you look at them the, the toe on those things are these are like alien duplicates of converse. like they didn't make them exactly right because the toes on these converse are big like you like way too big you know and i was like what well, and these are like high top lace-ups man they go pretty high up you know so i'm dressed very oddly and i'm like going okay uh so i'm starting to figure out that they're talking about back there and here like okay my consciousness is in this body but this isn't 
the body that I'm used to. This is, but this is Ronnie Dawson. I'm thinking this is the clone. This is, they put me in the clone, and and that's part of what they're doing. So they're they're not waiting on contact. They're already working on the means for interdimensional travel for us. They're already, you know, they're already building. And I think, and and they told me, you know, back there when they got the genetic samples, they said we need genetic samples from not just you, but from everybody. And I'm thinking, why would they need genetic samples from everybody? And that's the reason they want to make open contacts to get a better sample. They want to make, I think they want to make genetic clones that will can have not say my clone can house my consciousness, but they can't put you in it. But I think if they build genetic clones, they can put anybody's consciousness into it. Now, then you're, now you're looking at interdimensional travel. They can take the consciousness from here, put it in a body there. You want to go from here to there? That's how they do it. I don't know. It may be too far to trans, uh, transmit our physical body. So they're going to transmit our consciousness into another body. But uh, they did it on this, on me. They put my consciousness in that clone. But I don't know where that the consciousness that was in that clone went. I don't maybe he went back to my house. I don't know where he went, but but he wasn't there. I didn't I didn't feel anybody else in there. But I know uh, I'm on this alien planet. I'm talking to this other contactee, and I and he, I said, "What are you doing here?" And he said, "He said I'm here." He said, "I'm I'm in line to get the second uh, augmentation, uh, the penile augmentation." I and I said, "The what?" He said, "He said." Uh, he said, they're offering, offering me a chance to get the, said, I'll be the second one. You were the first. And I said, the penile augmentation. And, and I thought, man, he's talking, he's talking about uh, an augmented penis. And so I, I pulled my shorts back and I looked in there, man, it looked like guts in there. And I stuck my hand off in there. And my God, man. I mean, I, it looked like a wet noodle. I had a handful of wet noodle. And I thought, my God, man. And, uh, he said, well, he said, they told me if I, if I do it, they, they would uh, let my wife come up here and spend some time with me. And he said, so I'm considering doing it. And he said, uh, they, they let me here today to see how, you know, how yours went. And, uh, and I'm serious. I'm going, oh my God, man, this thing doesn't have a, a, a human penis on it. This is a human body, but it's not a human penis on this thing. And uh, well, the, the cat lady comes out uh comes back out and she says uh she says okay she says uh she says the, the reason we got you here she said uh says as you can you can tell we uh said we put a this this body has an augmented penis on it to better interact with the the, the cat speak the cat people and she goes uh and she, she says we've never done a function test on it she said we, we need to do a function test she said the doctor is waiting on us in there and she said we have a, a a young female cat lady that's volunteered and they and they said you'd be doing her a great favor to, it would uh, to have to, to check the function of this penis that's been augmented on this body that to do a function test to, and and it would help her estrus cycle pass quick well estrus is not even a word in my vocabulary i don't even actually after this whole thing i had to get on the dictionary and look up what estrus cycle is estrus cycle is a heat cycle of a cat in texas we say that cats in heat you know but that's the, that's what they that's a technical term for the heat cycle of a cat and, and like i said uh, she she used that term and it I, I didn't know exactly what it meant but i had to look it up when i got back and that's exactly what she was talking about she said and and i and i did a little research on it and when a cat in heat does have sex it does shorten their estrous cycle so i'm like that makes sense if it happens to a cat here on earth why wouldn't it be the same for the the feline species wherever they're at so and so and she said well they're waiting on us right now she said you told us you'd be willing to help us any whatever to help you know, do whatever it would take for the people of your world to meet the people of our world. And, and this is part of it. And she said, they're waiting on us in there now. And I'm like, okay, so it's, you know, I go, she goes to lead me in there again. So I walk through the wall again. Well, well, first of all, first thing she did was, uh, she said, uh, she said, I said, okay, you know, I said, I, I said, I'd help. I'll do whatever it takes. So she took, she takes out this little spray. She sprays it under my nose. And it's, it smells like a cross between urine and a sunflower is the best I could describe it. And, and as soon as that, she sprays that stuff in my nose, well, that, that 17 inch penis, it, it grows full length. I mean, this thing is like sticking 
And I looked at that thing. I thought, oh, my God, that thing's got to be two foot long. And that Jonathan got almost like he got offended. He said, he said, no, no. He said it's 17 inches. They said they told me it was exactly 17 inches. It wouldn't be any shorter and it wouldn't be any longer. It'd be exactly 17 inches. And it's important that it's 17 inches. And I said, okay, all right. I said, all right. And I, I said, look, I said, I was just making a rough estimate. You know, I said, it does seem like it is. You know, when I took a legitimate look at it, I was like, man, that looks exactly like 17. And he goes, it is. He said, that's what they told me. Is it very important that it's 17? And, uh, and I was like, okay, I didn't mean if any or anything, but he goes, no, nah. he goes, no, nah, it's 17. He said, they told me it's 17. And he was like, yeah. you know, and yeah. I said, all right. So it, this, and so she said, okay, come on. So she leads me back in there. This thing is already hard, just sticking up like a flat pole. And I'm walking in there and I walk through the wall again. There's a, there's a, there's a cat lady climbing up on this table and she's strapping her legs into the buckles. And then the, uh, then some of the, the nurse, the alien nurses are tying her wrist together. And they said, that's, they said, hey, we're restraining her for your protection. <coughs> and, uh, but her legs are together. And I'm like, well, I don't know how this, to work. then all of a sudden uh, the table that she's on, it, it comes apart. And then it, her legs are spread open. They pull it apart and her legs are, are still strapped in and they're spread open now. And I'm like, okay. And this alien doctor goes in there and he, he said, now it's important. He goes, he goes, he goes, when you feel like the ejaculate's fixed to come out, she, he said, you need to be full penetration, stop and stop. He said, and stay. Let it, you know, so I, the whole time I'm, I'm trying to do this thing, this doctor sitting there telling, you know, give me instructions. And I've got all these people around and this is like the weirdest thing ever, man. It's like, my God what have I got myself into here? You know, you know, I told these guys I'd help them because it was the right thing to say, you know, I did, I had no idea where, where it was going to take me. You know, I felt like when I told them I would help them do whatever it took to do, I felt like I was doing, you know, the, for the greater good of humanity. I had no idea it was going to get me in all this, you know? So I, you know, it got me in all this and uh, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to do what they want. I'm just, you tell me what to do, I'll do it, and and I did. But this 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 cat lady, she had white, she had short white fur. She looked a lot younger than the other one, and and she didn't have her whiskers trimmed off, and they were very long and hung down. She is very, I mean, very pretty, very pretty gal. I mean, she looked really really nice. I mean, and the, the white and the black stripes were beautiful looking on her, you know, and and she seemed a lot younger. And anyway, so anyway, I, finally, this I felt the ejaculate coming out. So I just sat there for a second, like that doctor was making sure I did, you know. And I'm like, he said, he said, okay, he said, and so I, I backed away, and he he goes, okay, you probably want to leave now. It's going to get a little more invasive, and I he said, I don't think you want to see see what we're going to do now. And I said, no, probably not. So I went ahead and, and left. Well, like I said, I I walked outside. And uh, I'm out there, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm naked from the waist down. This thing is like swinging down there around my knees now. <laughs> and these guys are still out there. So I'm, uh, I feel kind of embarrassed. I'm walking around out here naked in front of these guys. And uh, that Jonathan guy, he's looking at me because he's fixed to get the same thing, you know. So he's taking a good hard look. And, uh, and I'm going, okay, well, you know, I, I did what they wanted me to do, you know. And uh, anyway. And it wasn't long, and this uh, this cat lady comes back out. She's carrying this white bag, and I'm going, "What?" And, and she goes, "Look, she she goes, we need you to." She she said, "We want," she said, "We want you to take the we got this we got this female reproductive organ here. We want you to take and place it over the augmented penis, and we want to see if it reaches there's a hole in it, and we want to see if it re the tip of it will reach it." And I'm going, so it's basically a bag of guts she's handing me. And I'm going, okay, now you want me to, and she's, she said, okay, she sprays this stuff under my nose and it gets erect again. I'm going, there's no way I can take all these guts and like thread it on. I said, we're going to have to go over here. And, 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 and she said, these guys are help you. She said, just tell them what you want them to do. I said, okay, well, take these guts and go string them out over the top of that picket fence. And, and she, I said, I'll go over here and see if I can find the opening on it. Because it's just a big old handful of guts that come out of a, and I'm thinking this, it's like they give her a, a, 
it's like they i think it's the the same gal that i i had just had sex with they pulled her reproductive it's like they give her you know hysterectomy they pulled it out of her and so they go these guys they took it and they strung it over that fence i went over there and i found the opening i slid it over the thing and i pushed it down and and i, I I, you could see the tip of it and she was looking she goes okay that's you know she said that's she said okay that's good and she said she said well can you slide it up and down slide it up and down on the on the on the penis and see if you can ejaculate into it and i thought man that's like, that is the oddest request anybody could ever make you know and all these guys were looking on here and this is a gut hanging over a fence and and and, and i'm like i feel so stupid man i'm okay i'm sliding this the sleeve up and down over this this long ass alien penis and and and, and i'm thinking I, I, it's not gonna jack it and I, I said look i don't feel anything and she goes okay and she said that's all right so i i slid this thing off we put it back in the sack and the penis is still hard and all of a sudden it, it's sitting there and all of a sudden this ejaculate starts just coming out of it and just dripping I didn't even know it was going to come out or anything. It just starts globbing out the end of it and then it dripped down and dripped on my shoe. And I looked at it down on my shoe in frustration. And that Jonathan guy gave a chuckle. He thought it was pretty funny. And, uh, and, and the, and the cat lady is done. She said, catch it. No. And she's, she told, she instructed the guy holding the sack to bring it over and catch it, you know, catch, catch your jacket in the sack. And so he, he's catching his jacket that's dripping out of it into the sack. Like it's important to save it or whatever. And uh, so then she takes this thing and she's, she, she, they take it back inside, you know, uh, back into the surgery thing. And um, she goes, all right, well, you know, we certainly appreciate your help, you know? And I said, okay, you know, yeah. I, you know, I did whatever you ask, you know? And uh, she said, uh, she said, it's time for us to get you back. And she said, you want to sit down on the curb? And she said, we don't want you to fall down. And she said, and I said, well, I can go back in there if you, if you need me to go back in there, but I don't know. It's like they didn't want me in a surgery room yet or something. I don't know. She had me sit down on the curb. I, I seen her pull. It, I don't know. It looked like some kind of little electronic vice with the little ears on it. And, and she placed it and, and touched them. All I remember, she touched it to my temples. She touched it to my temples. And the next thing I know, I'm back. I wake up in my body, back in my bed. And man, I'm really rested. I have to go to work that morning. I've been out all night long on this little project. And, and when I got back in my body, man, I feel completely rested. Like I've never rested in a long, well, I guess when you're, when your physical consciousness is out of your body, it sleeps really good. You know, I think it would die, but no, it sleeps really well. They put me back into it. I was very rested. And that afternoon I went, I came home and I know the back of my leg was really itchy all day. And my wife said, man, oh, there's something, what is that on the back of your leg? And I looked up and I remember there's a triangle mark on the back of my left leg. And I remember then I didn't think about it, but I remember that the cat lady said, they, they, they said they gave me a vaccination to protect their interest on the back of my left knee. And that's where it was, this triangle marks was on the back of my left knee you can't see it hardly it's hard to you know look around and see it but there were the marks i was going oh man that's that's what she told me they give me did you and take a photo did, i never did catch the covid yeah i've got a i've got a photo of it too i said i've got to save this photo yeah. <laughs> so i've got the photo of it too yeah. wow so how do you feel after that how do you continue life like knowing what you know and uh well you know the the thing is you know this uh, you know i still i still i'm the, i'm the breadwinner of my family i still got to earn a living i have to go out and drive a truck every day and have a job and and uh, that's the tough part is is running around on, a, on an alien planet and then having to go back and go to work and, and go to yeah. the day-to-day -day. you know if i don't yeah. pay my electric bill they shut my electricity off it they yeah. don't care <laughs> that i've been on an alien planet representing every man woman and child on planet earth you know it, uh, no people have a hard time believing it but you know I, I i can't i can't tell people what to and not to believe they can either believe me or they cannot believe me all i know is i i'm if if, it's, if i'm tasked with representing everybody all i can do is the best i can do you know if yeah. they ask me to do something i'll try to do it you know and i didn't know where it was gonna go i was willing to take one for the team you know and i think it's important to, to take one for the team if somebody needs to take one for the team 
It seemed like everybody's so damn self-absorbed anymore. Yeah, Nobody, wants, you know. I mean, this is an important deal. You know, I, I want to fly around. I want to live in. I want to live in apartments that float around the world. You know, I want to yeah. go to the moon on vacation. You know, I want to go see the planets. You know, yeah. and and uh, and the uh, and the shortest way to that because there's you know there's there's lots of ways to get technology. You know, you can invent technology and create technology, or you can be gifted with technology. You know, I paid. I paid Toyota a good sum of money and they gifted me with a Toyota Sienna. You know, I don't know how the thing, <laughs> I can't work on the engine yeah. or the transmission, but I give them a bunch of money and they give me a nice vehicle, you know? <laughs> so it's gifted technology, you know? I don't know sure. everything about it. And that's, that's right. the same way we could be, you know, if we interstellar travel, interst interstellar tourism, interstellar trade, you know, there's lots of ways to get technology, you know? Uh, but the thing is, yeah, we got to get to that point now where we get people to believe us and uh, understand. I mean, well, it's they're not just flying around. They're actually, the government's admitted, you know, we're seeing them, but we don't know who they are or what they're doing. And the contactees know, yeah, we know who they are and what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody will believe us. You know? <laughs> so this and we've happened been, uh, we've fairly been short. For a long time. <laughs> this, this happened in, in 2020. So, right. Yeah, you know, that's fairly uh, like, close so so what's next so uh, i you know they don't really give me a clue what's next and, and i don't know when it's going to happen or whatever i, I kind of hope that uh you know they they get this uh, genetic clone figured out and maybe i'll be one of the first test subjects for it you know that yeah. that would be pretty cool to get you know put in an avatar body you know on an alien planet and get to roam around uh, I'd like to find out if you have little, little Ronnie Juniors moving around uh, somewhere out there. Yeah, you know, she said, "Yeah, you should be proud." <laughs> my kid, my kids are going to see new worlds, and I'm. But yeah. I, you know, I did ask. I did ask her. I said, "I said, why don't you use your children to see new worlds?" Because I thought, why? Why would you go to all the trouble to see new worlds with us? Why wouldn't you use your own kids? You know, and I did ask her. I said, "Why don't?" why don't you use your own kids to see new worlds? And she said they could never survive there. Oh, and I'm going oh, So that's sad. You know, I don't know. I don't know why they couldn't survive or whatever, but you think they, they would be able to, but for some reason, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe living where we are, uh, maybe we're tough. You know, we, we may, might not be physically tough, but we might be virally, uh, and biologically resilient to uh, diseases and bacteria and viruses sure. more than other other species are. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's a ticket. Yeah, we take certain things for granted, but also that we you know we think we're weak because we've got nothing to compare it to. Right. But we might be stronger than others. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, but, uh, we've been at this a... for uh, we've been at this for like over two hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a it takes a, a long time to tell it you know? <laughs> yeah well you you got a really good story do you want uh do you have a closing statement for everyone uh yeah you know i i, I got the book the ronnie dawson ufo story it's an ebook and you can get a printed copy of it for like 10 bucks you know so and uh, like i said and, and the great thing about an ebook is is new things happen i can add them to it you know so the book gets updated you know so uh like I said, every time I get something new, I put it in there and I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. But I, I, and it may nothing. It may be the end. They may be done with me. I don't know. You know, I don't get to choose, but I, I, I told them I was willing to help. I, I think they kind of like me. I, they like the way that I'm willing to do whatever they want. And, uh, and they don't give me a whole lot of warning and they make requests. And they seem like they're pressed for time a lot and they don't, and wow. people say, why don't you ask them this? Why? They don't, they don't have a lot of time to ask stupid Ron questions. Okay. It's like, whenever we're together, it's like they have an agenda and they're very agenda focused. And it's like, where are they? You know, we need you to do this if you're willing. Yeah. And they're waiting now, right now uh, they're ready for us, you know? So it, it ain't like you got a lot of time to say, Hey, what do they call you in your world? You know? Do you have pets on your world? Chat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of these days, it would be great to have a little sit down like that, but it, it just seems like that's not on the agenda yet. You know, maybe someday. Oh. Okay. But if I ever do find out, I'll be more than happy to let everybody know. <laughs> well, thank, uh, thank you so much for coming on, Ron. Um, it was very educational, entertaining. Uh, I heard a lot of new stuff that was 
very new to me. You know, I've been at this for a while. So yeah, yeah. And I, I really appreciate all the details that you went into. It's, it's really amazing. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gray. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to those watching, well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, more interviews coming up and I'll see you guys next time. So thank you, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Gray. And thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee, or experiencer, and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomenon, and the future, remember, truth will out.